call the <coughs> July meeting or the you know, July meeting of the uh, Historic Preservation Commission to order. Can you get a roll call, please? Mr. Coleman? Here. Ms. Herring? Here. Mr. Nicely? Here. Ms. Riviera? Here. Ms. Van Gundy? Here. Councilman Rohr? And Vice Chairman Hatton? Here. My understanding is uh, Councilman Rourke has contacted staff and had a family emergency and will not be able to attend. Yes. Can I get That's a motion? Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Herring? Yes. Mr. Nicely? Yes. Ms. Riviera? Yes. Ms. Van Gundy? Yes. Vice Chairman Hatton? Yes. Number two on the agenda, election of officers. We need to appoint a chairperson and perhaps a vice chairperson. Our chairperson has uh, resigned from council, which reminds me, we'll do an introduction. It's a good segue for that. Um, in fact, why don't I do the introduction first? We do have a new member. My understanding is you weren't here at the last meeting, That's correct? Right. Okay, so this is your first meeting, great. Um, Kara, would you mind introducing yourself? Maybe give us a little background? Sure. Um, my name is Kara Herring. And um, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, I have uh, been in Delaware for 16 years living here. I graduated from Ohio Wesleyan, um, so longer if you include that. Um, I currently work for Dave Care Architects, and we are now local. We just renovated the Stratford Church down at 315 and Route 23. Um, so so we are very excited. I am very excited to uh, continue to get my hands in Delaware and be involved. Great. Uh, welcome. Oh, awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. All right. Let's move on to number two, election of officers. <coughs> Our current chairperson um, resigned after a very long tenure on, on the uh, commission. Um, that was Roger Koch. And we certainly thank Roger for everything that he's done for uh, on the commission and done for the city. With that, we do need to elect a chairperson. Correct me if I'm wrong, will this be an interim until we uh, our normal January, or what will we do? No, that? we are changing the schedule um, with the uh, term dates that have changed. So July will be the new time that will be. For officers as well? Mm -hmm. OK. We'll just make that yearly with the um, as people's terms end and stuff. And <coughs> and we'll just do it together. Well, Mr. Chair, just Point of order, since you don't have all seven of you here tonight, you could consider waiting until another meeting where you had the full body here to elect officers. Obviously, you can run the meeting as the vice chair, chair pro tem, if you will, uh, until, you, until you officially do that. That that would be one way to handle it. I normally recommend that boards and commissions wait until they have everybody present to determine their leadership. And then the only other Point of order I would make for this commission in particular is that the chairman and the vice chairman in the absence of the chairman uh, plays a, a lot different role than uh, some of the other boards and commissions in that they need to be available by email and telephone and sometimes uh, in, in body and person to meet us on the street and talk about cases and that sort of thing. So with everybody being very busy and working and whatnot, that doesn't that just doesn't work for some people. Um, one thing working with Roger through all the years I've been here, I mean he he was remarkably accessible, uh, even even via email, which was not necessarily <laughs> Roger's thing. Well, not until the last few years. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did take a little it took a little patience to get there with it, but. Uh, he would drop what he was doing, and uh, if he wasn't in downtown already, he would uh, run into downtown, and uh, we as staff and my staff could often uh, meet him at a site with an applicant sometimes and talk through issues, particularly with this board where we changed several years ago to allow administrative approvals. Uh, if the chair and myself concur that something met the criteria for administrative approval. Uh, so that's just one thing to keep in mind for everybody as you're you're trying to figure out your leadership okay. moving forward. So, Thank you. Um, my only concern, looking back through the minutes, and I'm not sure the last time we had seven people. Um, it seems like every month we are missing someone. So, um, and keep in mind that the our council rep changes generally on an annual basis. Sometimes <laughs> it can go a little bit longer than that. By design, they want them to work in different committees. So uh, I'll certainly 
you know, take a flavor of the of the commission, but since we have six and are missing is the council person, I think we probably should go ahead and stay on schedule. I mean, I do I do think that's a valid point that it is rare that we do have all seven. Um, I think um, in the last year that might have happened once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Emphasize the word might have. Right. Or we don't have needed. It's true. Yeah, I would actually take an opposite view on this, though, I think. Um, simply because, in particular with this particular situation, or it was an emergency, sort of an unplanned uh, absence, we would have all been here, I'd say. At the very least, I think we should give it another month. Um, mm -hmm. Just for the sake of having every voice heard. How would uh, the, our absent member's voice be heard? I mean, and if we table this for next month, I'm saying. Right. But again, considering that we haven't had a full, you know, many months, just so you all know, many months, we, if we don't have items in front of this, we don't have a meeting. Well, I, I think, so. why don't we yeah, mm -hmm. find a happy medium, because I think to the point of, you know, maybe give it a, you know, three meetings and see if we can get all seven people here, and then we can always discuss it, you know, in three months, mm -hmm. and if we decide, you know, it's not, you know, that doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. We can always revisit it. That's fine. Do we know, do the other boards <coughs> generally wait until they have a full? Typically. Okay. Yep. So, so is there is there an issue if we don't get this July time frame? No, just next July. It'll still be up for. Okay. I'm just, I would just like to keep. Hopefully it's not yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, every July. Every July. The, we'll correct. do an election of officers and. That's just something we'll start doing on a more routine basis. Um, if it doesn't happen in July, that's not an, it's not a concern. It's more we just need to make sure we have someone to leave the meeting. Right. Okay. Um, no. And as Dave mentioned, your board's a little bit different than any of the other boards um, with the involvement, which you probably found out. <laughs> now, Mark's, now Mark's filling it directly. Um, yeah. But this. We have other boards that have decided to hold off. It is not a problem. It is difficult to get at times a full, like as you were mentioning there, right. times, but it will happen. Right. Okay, so we would need a motion to table? Uh, so, yeah, you could do that formally or you could just move on in the agenda, I think, by consensus. Up to you. Up to you. Yeah, we probably should table. We normally do that, so okay. Okay. Well, it's in the minutes. Okay, I'll make a motion to table um, item two. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Nicely? Yes. Ms. Riviera? Yes. Ms. Van Gundy? Yes. And Vice Chairman Hatton? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number three, approval of the motion summary of the HPC meeting held July 27th, 2018. And, and just for the Clarification of our new member. If you were absent, you can uh, abstain or recuse. Okay. Have a motion? Um, yeah. I move to uh, approve the minutes for last month's meeting. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Herring? Abstain. Mr. Nicely? Yes. Ms. Riviera? Abstain. Ms. Van Gundy? Yes. And Vice Chairman Hatton? Abstain. Sure. All right, item number four, regular business. Um, we are going to move this around a little bit from the agenda that the city sent out to uh, <coughs> commission members. Normally, we um, hear our informal reviews after the request. So because of that, we are going to basically swap B and C. So we'll start with the uh, request 1514. We'll follow up with the request 1784. And then we'll move to the informal review, which is 1727. Okay. So with that, let's start with um, 2018 a request by Cohatch. Delaware Community Space LLC for a, for a certificate of appropriateness for proposed exterior renovations at 18 East William Street, which is right next door, which is zone B2, Central Business District, and located in the transitional subdistrict of the Downtown Historic District overlay. 
Staff, do you have a report for us? I do, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, as some of you will recall, it, we're here at the last month's meeting. There was an informal review conducted with Cohatch. Uh, there were several options and uh, elements discussed and proposed during uh, that review process in the in direction given uh, by the members that were present. Uh, there were a number of determinations that were uh, we suggested would be uh, available for administrative review and approval and the board did discuss <coughs> those and uh, essentially ratified those and we had a discussion uh, really about the windows and kind of splitting that into you know, the doors and windows some of it administratively approvable and some of it to come back to you this evening. So uh, what's coming back to you in the intervening month is uh, updated plans, uh, elevations, uh, rendered elevations for every elevation with each window uh, for window divides. Uh, that was something we talked about last month as well. Um, you received my email, uh, I think last week or earlier this week, I can't remember when I sent it out on the two sample windows that are in front of you, one clad, it, both wood windows one clad in aluminum and one clad in fiberglass. We had a discussion about that. The fiberglass would save overall uh, about $15,000 in total on both stories of the building, 5,000 or so on the second story, or you can think of it as the city's story. It's all the city's building, of course, and, uh, and the balance then on the first floor, the cohatch space. Uh, if you will. So in the scope of the overall project, not a tremendous amount of money, but uh, every dollar, especially public dollar, um, is precious as far as we're concerned as the administration. Um, and so that's something to consider, especially in my judgment, how far both of these materials have come in the last 10 or 15 years is uh, fairly remarkable. And both of them are very good windows. So uh, city staff is here tonight, Jerry Warner, the building official. Uh, representatives from Cohatch are here and they can certainly talk a little bit more about windows. I think the one thing we don't want to do is um, stymie the decision on Cohatch for a maybe a broader discussion on cladding of windows in the downtown. Uh, I feel like we could separate both of those issues and keep this project moving forward because um, frankly they need to order windows. There's 44 of them and uh, it can start to hold up the project. So, uh, with that as a background, um, again, this is the building next door, the old Gazette building. Uh, you received a lot of background information last time and in your packet as to the history of this particular structure. The city is the owner of the structure and uh, it would be mixed use. Um, is the proposal co-hatch uh, in the basement, the first floor, and uh, city offices uh, on the second floor if uh, everything comes together. We're certainly a growing community and um, I can attest to the fact that we're running out of space here at City Hall for our growing community and try to provide the services that our citizens uh, demand of us. The property is in the B2 uh, downtown commercial district and is in the transitional sub-district of the historic district overlay as we went over last time. Aerial photograph should we need to reference it. So again, just some of the uh, photographs of the building, and I think one of the elements of change in this, as opposed to the informal review, see if I can work my fancy new pointer here, uh, is this north side of the building, uh, sorry, south side of the building, um, which has a, a parge on it that is falling apart and is uh, exposing the brick underneath really needs to be uh, fixed. Uh, as you'll see in your packet and as we go through, uh, that is called out uh, to do that fix, but also um, in activating the space behind this wall and putting the patio out, out here by the loading dock, as was discussed last time, uh, there are some windows proposed for uh, this face of the building as well, which were not in the uh, informal review, but would allow light into that part of the building. So we'll see that as we go through. Mr. Eppelin, if I could just ask, since there were three members that weren't here last time, if you refer to last time, maybe you could give us a little more okay. detail because yeah. half, of the, half of the folks weren't here. I could try. It was about a <laughs> two and a half hour discussion or so, so <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to summarize it, but uh, that's the summary on the back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so here on the entry doors, uh, there are a number of entry doors. The idea is to simply uh, reuse the doors that are there 
uh, refurbish them, paint them, that sort of thing, but reuse the doors. Discussion on a loading dock door was to, they obviously don't need a, a loading dock per se, but they'd like to activate that space. And so the discussion centered around how do you uh, kind of maintain that look and feel, but still make it um, able to be open and let light in, but also let people kind of come in and out of it. Um, and including putting a little patio out, obviously sits above grade there. And so you could see in the packet tonight, the design solution uh, in that regard. And we have a, it's in your packet, but we have a photo of it as well. Here it is. <clears throat> Here you can see the windows, the, the, the fixed parts on the back uh, wall, the patio area, uh, the design approach with respect to the loading dock and, and patio. Um, we did uh, determine that the ADA lift is administratively approvable. It's obviously an ADA uh, improvement. You need a lift to get in, into this building, and that's where it would be, uh, again, the door to remain. So around on, on this side of the building, or the west side of the building, kind of facing City Hall, uh, there are a couple of windows that are unique in shape and uh, location. Yeah, those would not be replaced, they'd be refurbished. Now, there are 44 windows, uh, I'll say approximately, because maybe I'm missing one in there, but I'll say 44, a lot of windows on this building to be uh, replaced. And that's the proposal, including two that you see on the right side of the screen that were uh, bricked in and would be uh, reestablished, which is a welcome change. Again, window replacement, and you can see that there are a variety of windows, openings, sizes, and shapes in this building, more than maybe when you first look at the building and uh, maybe think that they're all the same. They're definitely not. These are really, if we need to refer to them, again, photographs of the building. So the current proposal uh, includes a pergola out front in the uh, open patio space as it sits today. It would remove the planters that are along the uh, foundation of the building today, rebuild a bit of a, a stone wall between the sidewalk space and the front of the building to, to kind of separate the space, add some planter boxes, some seating, uh, a uh, steel I-beam frame pergola that would be open, the roof would be wouldn't have a roof, it would have uh, wood slats, if you will, uh, be a pergola. Um, and be, it was determined at the informal hearing, there were two options, one was kind of perpendicular to William and one was kind of parallel to William and the clear consensus uh, of HPC was uh, that this one, uh, parallel to William, uh, was the preferred design alternative. Uh, that also led to uh, a discussion about the signage on this particular part of the building, which here in stark relief looks <clears throat> a little bit different than what it's going to look like in the, in the real world with the pergola uh, essentially blocking the signage if it were to be put on the wall. And so the signage is proposed to be pulled out uh, and placed on the pergola, which was generally at the informal hearing um, well received, I think, by the commission. Uh, that would be externally illuminated signage, but would include, and it doesn't really show up here, shows more white, but it, it does have internal to those layers, I guess the green color of cohatch, kind of in the center of those, the C and the O. And then every elevation was reproduced in your packet. This was a request at the informal hearing so that uh, determination could be made with uh, detailed information as to uh, the mullion divides. Our guidelines do allow for uh, mullion divides uh, to be uh, not individual panes of glass. Of course, you could, you could do that too, but our guidelines allow for, just like City Hall here, uh, an adaptation of that. Um, the applicant on the window closest to me, these are samples, so they have sort of every variety that, that you know they're trying to sell the windows that you can but the applicant indicated they would be uh, wood divides on the exterior clad in whatever material is determined to be appropriate here aluminum or fiberglass i guess as it comes down you can see the divides for each window i won't go through each one um, but the idea is that they would um, be double hung windows as well so they'd be operable 
and we just have every elevation should really should we need to discuss it and go into detail again here's the the south side this shows you a little bit of relief uh, from the, the difference between the pergola and the front of the building, there's only about 20 feet of space between the back of the sidewalk and the front of the building. Some of these renderings, it just feels in the rendering that there's a lot more space than there really is out there. Um, but it does show you the separation between the pergola and the front of the building at this particular elevation. Um, here you're starting to see on the west elevation the, the cohat sign above the one particular window. Uh, we did have some discussion about that. Uh, the applicant is proposing for you uh, a sign that's in conformance with your guidelines and with the sign code on a sign back or forth. That is what they're proposing today, and that's what we're recommending approval of. They are throwing a marker out for the future uh, that perhaps they might bring back formal application in the future to do an illumographic sign back there, uh, but that's really just conceptual at this time. Again, details of the front patio and design. Uh, Delaware blue vein cultured stone would be used for uh, the, <coughs> the front stone, and the paver stone would be uh, blue uh, stone pavers, not unlike uh, kind of uh, the way the stone looks at St. Mark's uh, just down the street. We have some samples you could look at. You can see the up lighting and the uh, proposed uh, outdoor chandeliers in this rendering as well. More details on the sign, I think I just went through that with you. And again, the proposed sign on the west side, this is what is proposed and it is compliant uh, with the guidelines and the code. This is sort of the future graphic uh, that they may come back with, an Illuma graphic uh, that we probably need some more details and information about and would be brought back as a formal case for you. I, we don't have, to my knowledge, another Illuma graphic sign in the city placed on bricks. So. That would have to come back before the board. Um, but it does look kind of cool. <laughs> Obviously, we want to make sure the brick isn't damaged in that and, and that sort of thing. But there are real world examples of this out there in Worthington and other places that we can collect <coughs> some information from. So I think that's a quick summary. I know the agenda is long tonight. I maybe didn't go over everything in the formal review. But I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. But I, I think it's probably most appropriate to allow. Uh, co-hatch to fill in some of the details for you and of course Jerry Warner's here and is our project manager uh, co-project manager with Jackie Walker who is uh, out of the office for a little while and she visited us at the last meeting um, but Jerry is here to help us through on any of the city side uh, of the project as well okay any questions commission members or city staff this time uh, one of the things I want to do real quick, um, we have some new members and we have a lot of folks here, and that is to go over, this is in the packet that the applicant signs, but this is also um, applies to what we as a commission, these are the guidelines that we follow and these are set in place by our standards. Uh, and it says variance explanations. If the applicant believes that strict application of the standards and guidelines for the historic district will create a substantial economic hardship or that there is an unusual and compelling circumstance, a narrative to support a variance from or waiver of the code requirements may be submitted. The variance or waiver shall be granted only if the commission deems that at least one of the following six criteria are met. There would be a substantial economic reduction in the value of the property due to the application of the standards and guidelines. The property cannot be maintained in its current form and substantial economic burden would result from the application of the standards and guidelines. No reasonable alternative exists. The property has little or no historical or architectural significance. The property cannot be reasonably maintained in a manner consistent with standards and guidelines or no reasonable means of saving the property from destruction, demolition, or collapse exists. I read this to make sure that everyone who's here tonight and, and some of our new commission members understand that, that we have these objective guidelines that we have to follow to make an exception. 
Um, we do not have the ability to subjectively say, I like that, or I think that would be neat in the downtown, or that's my favorite restaurant, I like to go there a lot. So we, we have these, and, and it's important, if you are appearing in front of us, I, I would encourage you to try and focus on one of those areas or multiple of those areas, um, because that is the task that we have in front of us, and those are the guidelines that we have to follow. So with that, if the applicant is here and would like to come up front or his, rep, his or her representative. Hello. Hello. I would ask you to name and address because we need to have that for the record. Hello, Matt Davis, 4620 Hickory Rock Drive, Powell, Ohio, 43065. <laughs> Terry Hagener for 18290 Burger Road, Marysville, Ohio. Joel Lyons, 283 East North Street, Burlington, Ohio. Okay, thank you. Did you get all that? Yes, actually, I have it already. Awesome, thank you. You might move that sort of in the middle so that you get picked up. All right, thank you for coming in tonight. Um, why don't I guess we can have questions, but if you guys maybe want to kick off, tell us a little bit more about your project, anything that's happened maybe since the last meeting that you'd like to fill us in on. Me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, since the last meeting, uh, we've taken a lot of the feedback and tried to process the best we can to come up with some solution that we think is appropriate to move forward. Honestly, um, not everything in here is ideal for us, um, but in the spirit of being expedient and getting this done, we've modified some things to be compliant with the package, even though there might be some gray areas. We try to avoid gray areas where possible to try to do that. Um, so the things that we're asking for tonight, we hope get your feedback from last time and that we can get approved this evening so that we can continue on our construction. And you might see our smiling faces again on this sign that you see on the one side but for now we are in we believe we're in compliance i just don't think that uh that standard is meant to be for a brick wall that is 200 feet long so therefore it is we might not put it up we want to get it approved and see if we can and just hopefully we can come back and get something else up there with that meets your guidelines that you just suggested, but everything else we think it does. Okay. Questions from commission members? Well, um, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good strategy because nothing um, bogs us down. I think historically more than signage and wind buttons. <laughs> uh, so I think that's good, kind of segregating that from the main project to uh, get me more excluded. Um, with regards to what it does. <clears throat> um, I really appreciate you guys putting together the elevation drawings that were included in this uh, month's packet. Uh, that was extremely helpful to me and uh, kind of seeing what you were, um, what you and the city uh, were hoping to accomplish with that. And uh, I did express some reservations with the, the mullions um, on that type of building, but uh, seeing the elevations, um, I definitely. Uh, 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 I thought it looked a lot better than I had anticipated. Um, not really a question, but just kind of a comment is when we get into the window uh, treatment. Uh, my my thoughts are, you know, right now the standards do not allow for fiberglass, and I think me personally, I think um, if we're going to go down that road, that really to me involves. Uh, I changed to the standards, and I think from the standpoint of your timeline, I don't think that that's a, you know that that's a practical uh, uh, that's going to be practical for your uh, timeline. You know, my concerns about fiberglass, and you know, I'm sure they have come a long way in 20 years since the standards were uh, written, but I think that is a major change. Again, windows are a huge part of the standards. That's why we always have spent so much time on them historically. And I think it would uh, not be, uh, I don't think it would serve uh, the spirit of the standards and the, the future of this commission and its, you know, uh, its purview if we make a uh, change on the fly without fully investigating, you know, the, uh, uh, 
a new type of window, you know, for longevity. Um, how, you know, how long does it does the color fade on uh, the fiberglass um, at a different rate than it would on the window? If it does fade, uh, what is the uh, you know how receptive is that type of material to uh, repainting versus you know aluminum? Uh, you know, I just to me, it, it, I think we need a lot more information on that particular product before we make a change to what has always been one of the most important uh, aspects of the standards. So again, I think um, pretty much everything else I saw in the packet in terms of the proposal that you're actually bringing to us, um, I thought looked really good. And I'm generally supportive of virtually everything in there, uh, except for you know, going with the fiberglass window that is not in the standards. Can, if you don't mind, no, please. The reason we brought the fiberglasses versus aluminum, if, if personally, I like the aluminum lock. <laughs> I like that. Um, the fiberglass saved around fifteen plus thousand dollars, and with the advancement of the windows and the technology and the, the paint, I have had the opportunity to do a little bit of investigation, and the fiberglass will hold up as good. Um, I need a decision tonight. Yeah. So if, if that's the case, aluminum clad's fine by us. Right. We were bringing it to the attention of the board for the simple purpose of going forward, if possible, yeah. look at fiberglass. And I would like to, I can, to help you, I can bring a window expert yeah. in at a later date and, and do over all those details that'll help you later. But I understand the yeah. requirements. So if it's fiberglass or if it's aluminum clad, yeah, and I appreciate that. And I know that was part of the conversation, you know, last month among several of the commissioners as well as the applicants that, you know, it, it, maybe it is something to look forward down the road, but it may not be at this time. So I do appreciate you going to the uh, going through that effort and actually bringing that in there and giving us an opportunity to, you know, look, is that something in, uh, you know, in the future that we want to consider? So at this point, we have approval for the... Well, they, they, they got a... I'm sorry, I'm just voicing my. I haven't voted yet. This is yeah, my, 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 my commissioner's viewpoint. As a, uh, I'm going to speak. I'll, I'll speak for uh, Shaw and the economic development. If you have 200 buildings, again, I'm fine with either one. You have 200 buildings downtown that you restored times 15 grand. That saves you hundreds of thousands of dollars towards the refurbishment of your downtown with no noticeable difference. And it, which enables probably several extra projects to be done. And I'd rather have that junk window be replaced in some other buildings with the fiber last versus not being approved. I would uh, highly encourage you to really take that approval seriously because I look at it from just a straight small business perspective and it matters a lot. 15 grand is a lot of money for someone that's small trying to get a business up and running. So this case is different. He has time to do. I'm sure you'll approve the aluminum, but it'd be. Uh, I, I would hope that you would overall look at approving it long term. I appreciate that. And again, speaking for myself, I certainly will keep an open mind to it and look forward to, you know, investigating it and, uh, you know, evaluating it and then, you know, discussing it among all the other commissioners as well. I would just like to add my opinion on the windows, um, looking at it as a real estate point of view. Um, every, I've sat on this, um, this committee for a year now and I feel like we've had a lot of requests for changes of standards um, though it's always pushed to the next meeting and I feel like there needs to be a start and I would like to see a start this evening um, maybe in regards to the fiberglass I think in perspective of just the real estate downtown and what's going to be coming here um, we need to kind of make changes to our standards with the allowance of the windows. I think looking at both of these windows, they both look nice to me. I, I know the fiberglass in some of the homes last longer than the wood. You have maintenance, you know, water deterioration and sanding and all that goes into those windows. Um, again, we're talking about taxpayers' money on this building too, and I feel like <laughs> Though we have a duty of preserving the history to downtown, um, we also have to be kind of cautious of our taxpayers and if they would like our nomination of more expensive window on our budget as well. 
Um, but that's kind of my point of view on that. I think I, a decision tonight would be great. I, I guess we've never did a change of standards since I've sat on the board, so um, I don't know the process and how long that takes, but I think we need to start something this evening. I agree with you. I also saw no discernible difference between the windows and eyes living. The fiberglass is sturdy, uh, yeah. it's just as good. Right. Thank you. The fiberglass to me looked just as good. It was very sturdy. I was knocking around on it. But uh, I, I think that's a substantial amount of money to save for the city and for uh, downtown investors. And I, I do think we need to start really focusing on updating our, our standards because there's a lot of new technology. Where does that start changing the standards? Does that start here? Where does that start with? The last thing we probably changed was probably the Biden. patio. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of discussion on uh, the advancement in light technology and brought in some experts from sign companies and lights and, and made some accommodation in that regard. So one, one of the things to keep in mind is that our standards are essentially based on the National Historic Trust standards. So it's unusual that we would deviate from those unless there were something that we could say was locally very different. So if you were, I don't know, on the coast of Carolina or something and you had hurricanes to think about, there may be some exceptions. Um, it doesn't mean we absolutely are stuck to that, but essentially that's what we do and that's what most of the preservation, historic preservation commissions around Ohio and around the country do. Um, one, of, one of the uh, benefits of that is you have some standardization, right? The other thing is that the National Trust is able to do much more research, <coughs> um, hands-on sort of findings with these sort of things than, than a small town like Delaware or anywhere else could do. So it doesn't mean we can't deviate from the national standards. Um, we really haven't in the past, except maybe around the edges in some areas. So um, to answer your questions, can we do it? Sure. We haven't done it for a while. Um, the process is fairly time consuming. Um, so it's, it's to, to be clear, if, if, if your intentions who spoke up are to grant this variance, that's completely different. We can grant a variance tonight, right? Again, based on the standards that I read, and I would encourage you all to pay, it's in the packets, it's in your packets every week. Pay attention to which of those seven that you feel would, um, ver uh, would, would allow for a variance, um, but we can certainly do that tonight. Uh, the city staff, if I, the one question I may have from city staff is, this seems to be a very wide ranging, semi ambiguous um, staff recommendation. I, I don't make motions as the chair, but someone's gonna have to. There's, there seems to be a lot of gray area as far as crafting a motion around what we want to do tonight. For, with respect to, for windows? No, just windows. the whole project because oh. we've got, you know, we got a big packet here. Yeah. But what we don't really have is what we usually see from staff is kind of a bullet point or a numbered list of everything that's included that we really don't have here. And so I'm just speaking as a as a member, not the, the chair. When we get to that point to look for motions, it seems like we're we've got a lot of gray area in here. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps it was because you weren't here last time. Uh, You'll see numbers throughout this packet that reference the previous one through eight items. Okay. We tried to take them on as windows, doors, signage, those type areas. Right. Uh, and then we tried to carry those numbers through <coughs> for the ones that are germane to the case tonight as opposed to administrative approval. Okay. Uh, so just to sort of orient you to how, how the packet reads, it, what we would recommend as staff is contained in the last page, we recommend approval as it's submitted tonight. Right, yeah, I got that. Uh, it would require uh, the granting of uh, a variance, uh, perhaps. With respect to windows, uh, what we offered is exactly what you just described. We, it's certainly fiberglass, it's not in the guidelines today. And so that would require you all to uh, find at least one of the conditions of variance to be present and for 
I guess four out of six of you tonight to, uh, to agree on that uh, for passage. The alternative is the aluminum clad window. It's here. They're accepting of it. Obviously meets the guideline. I don't think anybody on the board would have a problem with that. And they can move forward with the project there. You can split the difference here. You can debate variance on the fiberglass window for this case. It is a public building with a mixed use, so it's it's a pretty unique animal just in terms of use that way. Um, and determine whether a criteria for variance exists. And you clearly have given some direction here tonight, a, a, a head nods if nothing else, that uh, we'd like to take a more of a look at the fiberglass material and perhaps changing the guidelines <coughs> formally to include that. One thing I'd note in talking to some other applicants who are going to bring things forward to you in the future is that, and that's not germane to this case, uh, when applicants go forward with a uh, state or federal tax credit project, the state has only just now begun accepting aluminum clad windows. Our guidelines are actually more lenient than the state of Ohio in terms of tax credits. And those are often multi-million dollar credits that enable large projects to have. Obviously, we're city the owner of this building, so it's, you know, we're, we'll pay tax that way. But um, that's a consideration as well. It doesn't mean you can't allow a range of choices within the guidelines, obviously. Um, but that does affect some other types of projects as well. Okay. Any other questions, comments from commission members? Did you? Is it possible that, <coughs> well, is it possible to vote on the whole packet except for the windows that clear the slate except for the windows? And then I would like to make a motion on the windows. Like well, you can't make you can't make a motion. Well, but I can <laughs> make a suggestion. We so yeah, so that was going to cause a whole lot of different discussion outside of the other stuff. So we generally follow Robert's rules of order. Uh, we have the recommendation. City staff has recommended <coughs> acceptance of the packet um, as, of, of the proposal. Um, we can certainly do that. We can say no to the whole thing, or we can change as long as Mr. Eflin pointed out, as long as four people. Four commission members vote in favor of it. Okay. So I'll I'll put that back to you. Is I would, that I would say that what is your your I would, like to, I would like to us uh, ask that the whole thing get approved, including the vinyl windows. I think the vinyl windows cause us a financial hardship of fifteen thousand dollars to complete the project. We're over budget on the project. We ask that you help us get back in budget on the windows. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Um, Mr. Nicely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my one thought on specifically is in regards to the, the discussion of the windows is if we refer back uh, to the six criteria that are our basis for granting a variance, and I thank you for bringing that up. That's the point that I think we often raise. Um, I think the, the third uh, criteria, which says no reasonable alternative exists, I think that really is the crux of the discussion, is because this is a unique structure uh, that does involve public money uh, as well as private money. Uh, how do we want to define that? What is reasonable alternative in this particular case? Because it is somewhat unique uh, because of these situations that we've dealt with or that we're dealing with now. And, and I think that's really where we need to focus our discussion. If we want to entertain this idea of having something other than aluminum clad windows, uh, where do we want to define that? Is it reasonable to say $15,000 more, or is it not? Well, I think my, my thoughts there, though, are, I mean, basically any applicant for any material, whether it be for a window or for any kind of exterior cladding or anything, could make the same argument that, um, you know, we just had one recently uh, where somebody wanted to use an outdoor metal siding, uh, essentially a barn siding, on one of their elevations of their uh, uh, structures, as a cost savings so they could stay in budget. I understand that I, I deal with a budget every month. I have to reconcile a budget at work for a you know, very large facility. And I understand that you know $15,000 is a chunk change. It, you know, it all adds up and it's $15,000 here for the windows. It's you know uh, $20,000 for the electrical stuff that you didn't anticipate that you got into once you started taking you know walls down and things like that. I understand those things, uh, they add up and it's real money 
and it affects the budget. However, any applicant that comes before us can could make that argument that you know I need you know this is affecting the budget. It's an economic hardship, and therefore you know I need a pass on this particular standard. And I think that's a slippery slope that we you know I think we need to try to avoid. And again, I think I have no problem in the future looking at the fiberglass windows, but I think just trying to jam it through in one or two meetings without a thorough investigation and a discussion, and I don't mean to slow walk it so that we never make a change. I think we do need to make a real attempt to uh, look at these, understand them, avail ourselves to the expertise that has been offered, and make a um, you know make a sound decision based on all the information. And we don't have any of that information to make that decision tonight. And I think it's, you know, to me, I think, um, you know, lacking information, you know, empirical information that shows here's how these things weather over 20 years. We don't have any of that. And we're saying, well, they look great right now on the floor in front of us in a climate controlled building, uh, showing samples. But, you know, that doesn't say they're going to hold up in 10 or 20 years. And maybe they will, um, probably they will, I don't know, but I don't have any data or I don't have any empirical information to make that to make that decision. And just, you know, going off of how they look right now, right out of the showroom, to me, I think it's, um, I, I just don't think that's the right way to proceed. I don't think that's what the standards are all about. And I know, yes, sometimes standards seem like they could be very onerous and they affect the budget, but the standards are there. That's the reason there's a guy on uh, South Sandusky that doesn't have a uh, barn siding for his, you know, for his wainscoting on the front of his building because we have standards. And even though he wanted to do that to stay within the budget, and that's a real case that we had, um, you know, we had standards that didn't allow that. And I think, you know, um, I think we need to try and stay within the standards unless these, you know, criteria are absolutely demonstrably in black and white met, and I don't think that this rises to that. So I think we're making a sea change uh, to what this commission has been all about, and, you know, I get it. Uh, people don't like government, uh, you know, restrictions. They want to kind of do their thing, but the applicant actually did um, earlier say that they would be fine going with the aluminum clad, understanding it's going to be another 15K to the budget, but they would do that. And I think let's take them up on that and then let's make a real concerted effort to get the expertise in here. We can work with our um, staff and we can get the expertise in here. We can have the discussions over the next scheduled meetings and we can try to get through this as quickly and expeditiously as possible with all the real information that we need <coughs> to make a, uh, an informed decision and not just, it looks good right now, go for it. Uh, so that's my two cents on it. I do have a question. Um, what is the total budget for the windows? I know we just hear 15,000. What are you paying for the windows? I give what am I paying for? What What is the cost of all the windows? The first floor for the Marvin is forty-two thousand three hundred thirty. For the second floor is twenty-four thousand what eight dollars. Uh, and the intent the fiberglass would be thirty-four thousand four hundred forty-two, and the second floor would be eighteen thousand two hundred fifty-five. Okay. It's like a thirty percent. Yeah. Um. Yes. And I appreciate you. You know being open to allowing a change for the standards. Um, and I understand when you comment about barn siding, to me, I feel like that's a really big drastic cosmetic change to a building, and this is a window. Um, I, I sell many houses and I see the difference between a wood and a fiberglass window. I think that they've kind of gotten the fiberglass window down to a technique. The only thing that really went bad with those are the seals inside and that gas escapes and it can get foggy. And I know I'm not a window expert, but I'm just sharing my yeah, knowledge sure. with properties that I You're see. You're more of an expert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, other than that, I think they've, the newer fiberglass windows, they know that about that window now and it's, you know, yeah. not happening. But when you do see these properties that have these wood windows that 
were installed in 1950s. They all need sanded down. They've been rotted. Um, you know, they need replaced. I just feel like it's it's a lot of maintenance for those windows where this fiberglass, it, it, it looks the same way. So to me, in that standpoint, I just don't see why we're, I guess, arguing over, though, because it's the standards and we need to protect our history. It's not a huge cosmetic change changing the looks of our downtown. Um, I think it's going to open the doors for some of these previous builder owners, the owners of the buildings, to be able to rehab them, too, because um, now they're just sitting there deteriorating, and that looks bad. And, and for the record, that you're trying to prove fiberglass versus aluminum. Those two materials have been around for 50 years. So it's not like some space-age polymer that we don't know the lifespan of. It's fiberglass. Fiberglass has been around forever. We know the tradition of fiberglass. Yeah, no, and I get that. I just, I just think, for me personally, if I'm going to make a decision to over, you know, to essentially uh, a variance of the standards or even a change of the standards, I would like to have the information, which I don't have. And I'm not saying they're not great. I just don't know. And I would like to get I would like to get the information and I would like to, you know, have the benefit of staff doing an analysis and bringing us the information so that we can, you know, take that, look at it, read it, understand it, and then make that informed decision. And and then maybe we get there. And that would be great. <laughs> I would love to get to a you know, a point where, you know, we do have something where it's just it has the efficacy of you know what's in the standards now and it saves people money i'm all for that but i just want to make sure that we prove it out and we don't at, at you know presently i don't think we have that information and i think we need that before we make that jump mr chairman at the at the risk of overstepping my boundaries uh, but moving the discussion along <laughs> with respect to this it might help just to take a vote on the windows and the cladding in this case with respect to a variance. And, and you'll know okay. where the board is at. I, would, I would direct you to just that there's a six criteria that you read very mm -hmm. accurately, but there's also two definitions that are germane for those of you on, on either side. Um, and that's in the definition section. I don't have page numbers, I'm sorry, but I think it's like page three um, of substantial economic hardship as well as unusual and compelling circumstance, which are uh, a little bit different than just the three sub uh, tests under each one of those. Uh, in my judgment, this is probably isn't, uh, and I'll disagree with Matt a little bit, as much of an economic hardship in the overall scope of the project, although. Again, I just said on the record, every public dollar is precious to us as administration, so I'd reiterate that. But to me, there might be grounds for an unusual and compelling circumstance here in the scope of the project, uh, the ownership of the building, the mixed use of the building, and the public dollars that are being used in this particular building, notwithstanding or uh, arguing any of the points that you've raised. Mr. Nice. So thank you. Uh, I did have one question actually for city staff because I think what uh, Mr. Eflin mentioned is kind of the heart of this point that we're debating right now is on one hand, uh, this is a mixed use city owned building uh, that in some way or another does involve taxpayer money. So which is the better option here to protect taxpayer money or to hold the city to its own standards essentially? Uh, and so I'm curious if I could ask from city staff, uh, just for clarity, because we've been talking quite a bit about numbers and who's paying what, what is the actual impact to the city or to the taxpayer uh, versus Cohatch, uh, whenever we're talking about the costs for these windows? This is where I'd definitely like to have Jackie present. She knows <laughs> ad nauseum the details. But Jerry, do you know the answer to that question? Yeah, there isn't any difference in, in my opinion. It's tax dollars either way or it's an individual, private individual trying to do the same thing that the city's trying to do. You're trying to do cost associated with the improvement and whether or not to determine whether you got a vinyl clad window or a fiberglass clad or an aluminum clad. The reason why the city did the aluminum clad years ago is because the fact that nobody wanted to paint the outside of the wooden windows. It wasn't for any other reason. An aluminum clad's not historically correct nor is a fiberglass in the purest. But if you look at the national standards, like Mr. Hatton said, they'll 
there are other materials though that they do approve and do allow, and they're looking at seams and joints and what looks the best. But is it does it look historically correct? And you got to kind of go from there. Most of these are all color fast, and they're color black. They got lifetime warning on some of the color fast on all these fiberglass units that we looked at earlier. But we've done our homework on it. And the other thing of it is, is that. I, I, I hear Mr. Coleman, but do you want a 20 year window? Do you want a 50 year window? What, what, it, I don't think that it's for us to determine if, if you're putting in a five year window or a 20 year window or a 50 year window. It's, we're looking at does it meet your historic standards? Right. And currently, the aluminum clad do, and fiberglass do not. And if we're going to make that change, I just want to get the information. Well, I, I understand what you're saying is. I'm just saying, though, that neither one of them are historically correct. Mm -hmm. It's just that we went ahead and set aluminum clad years ago because nobody painted right. the windows. Hey, Jerry, I think Commissioner Coleman's question was most directly about on the shell here, which includes the windows, I think, how much is city dollars versus cohatch dollars? Maybe Matt knows that off the top of his head too. He probably does. He knows the budget mm -hmm. just as well. Jackie does. They argue about it. <laughs> uh, it's public record, so the city's paying one point one eight five six. Thank you. Any decimal points? No. 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 Okay. One point one eight five six million dollars for the building. We pay for every dollar over. Since we are over budget, we pay for it and hence we are trying to reel it back in. Thank you. But the building, the city, the everything public. we pay for, the city gets to keep, hence why everyone's right, motivated right. to do so it. So in terms of, you know, and I'm not, again, not diminishing the hit on your budget, but in terms of the public funds, then that's not really a factor, is it? Well, I think it's mostly public dollars and they're paying the overage. Right. and. From my indicated that you're already over. So I'm just, and again, I'm not saying that $15,000 is in any, but I'm just saying the argument that we're playing with public funds, we're not actually playing with public funds at that point. Then. No, but we're, it depends we're on paying how much money for the, the, of stuff. the project. We're paying for the project. We the people. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, including I, yeah. the window. It's I'm one it's, of those people. I think it's actually. I know, I get it. It's the, it's the over it's that the, the, Literally, what your uh, the ironic part is, what your really arguing it's not the material or the aluminum and what's historic it's the fact that you'd rather see a decrepit old window in other buildings versus that one well, that's what you're arguing that's not what i'm arguing it is it's kind of budget wise I, 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 you know what i take issue with that um what i'm arguing is we have standard you want us to we have a variance of the standard i would like to have more information before we uh, you know, make a variance to that or grant a variance to that standard or change that standard i think that's a reasonable uh, thing to um, sure a, a reasonable approach to a major change to the standards that you know were promulgated 20 years ago after much deliberation much um, uh, you know uh, research and I just think you know I don't think that's unreasonable and I don't appreciate somebody telling me what I think okay I, so any other it. any other comments from Commission members if not I just want to add a few things so uh, again, we pattern our standards generally after the national standards. Uh, as Mr. Eflin pointed out, the state is actually uh, more strict on, on windows than we are. Um, I think our standards are fairly lenient compared to the state in some cases. Uh, and, 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 uh, I think of we allow aluminum clad storefronts, for instance, as Mr. Warner pointed out. Um, we allow uh, wood replacement for wood siding. So for instance, Hardy Plank, um, hopefully not Hardy Planks. I think they're the guys that had the class action suit as their product fell apart. Um, but what we've tried to do is look for products. Essentially what we're looking for is, uh, to, to Mr. Warner's point, it's not our purview or the standards purview is not that we're gonna require you have a 100 year window. It's we're gonna require you have a window that looks historic. So not only size, grouping, but also material. Now, again, we'll, we'll work around the edges on that. For instance, I live in a historic house. I would not put aluminum windows. By the way, I have 100-year windows that function perfectly. So <laughs> it does work. With a lot of maintenance. No, no, not really. Um, in fact, nothing. So, um, but the point being, 
what we want are windows, um, particularly whether the divided light or, or one over one. So that's a lot of it. The standards are in place. Uh, th my concern is that we have held to these standards since I've been on this board and, and since the standards were in place for 20 years. So if you look around our downtown, we've got a lot of buildings that have been renovated. We held firm on our standards when all of those folks, we held firm, by the way, taxpayer dollars, county dollars, with two giant projects just to the north of us, where we held firm on our standards. And that was taxpayer dollars. It's my taxpayer dollars and your taxpayer dollars. So I worry a little bit about that. Um, you know, one of the reasons that this, um, these standards are in place, particularly around the economic impact, it's not that a cheaper alternative exists. That's not in the standards. The, the standards simply say substantial economic reduction in value of the property, which this wouldn't be, no reasonable alternative exists, which I think Mr. Nicely said reasonable is, is, is the key word there. Um, I think reasonable alternatives do exist. They're in the standards. So for me, I'm, I'm would side with Mr. Coleman. I'm, I'm concerned. We've, we've definitely made some variances on this, on this entire project. Um, I'm comfortable with what we've done, what's presented here. Um, as long as we stay with this, within the standards on the windows and, and don't deviate from the standards on the window. Otherwise, I'm fine with it. So unless we have additional comments, I would, I would ask someone to uh, make a motion. We'll start that one off. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. I would move to approve request 2018. One five one four um, items number four, number five, six, and eight, with the provision that the window replacement and item number five are aluminum clad. Move second. Mm. I'll second. Did you get all that or do you need him to? Okay, awesome, thank you. We have a motion and a second to call for the vote, please. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Herring? Yes. Mr. Nicely? Yes. Ms. Riviera? Yes. Ms. Van Gundy? No. And Chairman Hutton? Yes. Motion carries, do my math right, five to one. Look forward to building it. Yeah, thank you. Look thank forward you. to seeing it. Thank you. Can I get all these windows out of Jerry's office then? What's that? <laughs> yeah, if you please. <laughs> if you please. They're in our hall. Uh, but I do appreciate your willingness to uh, work with us. And I think uh, if uh, you. we couldn't uh, ask you to have to get back in touch with you at some point, let's really have a discussion on those. And bring the information so that we can you know, study it. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't want to. Uh, I'd like to bring him here and let him talk to you all about it sure. more than don't make him prepare a bunch of documents. Okay, that's fine. That's he can just fine. come here and talk to you about the warranty difference, and then yeah. he can gather whatever you need to, and then I can go ahead and order my answers. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need to do something official to start that conversation? That we're part of the conversation? When we get to the member comments at the end, we need to put that on the agenda. Sure. Maybe have some homework for staff. Okay. So again, we're, we're switching up B and C, so we're going to move to 2018-1784. A request by the City of Delaware for a Certificate of Appropriateness for a Pedestrian Connector at 1 South Sandusky Street, which is Zone B2, Central <coughs> Business District, and located in the Downtown Core Subdistrict of the Downtown Historic District Overlay. <laughs> Staff, do you have a report? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, we do. This uh, <laughs> definitely is an unusual circumstance <laughs> uh, in that we're trying to create a City Hall campus. Um, 
obviously we own the old engineering building, the Gazette building, and of course the uh, technically replaced City Hall here, <laughs> uh, in addition to the, the addition room that, that we're all currently sitting in that came even later. And one of the things we're trying to do is provide for uh, the security, frankly, that's necessary in today's world with respect to public buildings and have single points of access. Um, account for ADA required connections, which uh, between our campus buildings is really the elevator out in the hallway and an ADA compliant ramp because there is a little bit of elevation change between this building and the Gazette building. Uh, but the long-term plan then is to connect the buildings with this pedestrian bridge and uh, rehabilitate the second floor of the Gazette building for additional city offices. Mixed with that is that we're obviously, we just talked about having a mixed use in the Gazette building of uh, a private business. And so having some security and separation between the first four floor private business, which has different hours of operation and people coming and going at all different times, and city offices, which have different security needs and uh, standard hours of operation, less night meetings. Uh, we need to separate vertically uh, those two uses in the building as well. This pedestrian bridge hits all three of those marks. Um, it is uh, the most cost effective way after looking at uh, the different options to proceed. So with that, we don't have standards in our guidelines with respect to pedestrian bridges. So we are all kind of um, evaluating this, not blind, but on the fly and, and, and coming up with a solution that I hope works. So the, the project is obviously located uh, at the corner of Sandusky and William in the uh, downtown B2 commercial business district. Um, it would literally, I guess, bridge the downtown core subdistrict and the transitional subdistrict. <laughs> uh, aerial photographs, should we need to refer to it? And then just sort of some background and some information for how we came to the design that we came to, uh, which again, and perhaps I'm stepping on third rail, but uh, has a lot to do with budget and public dollars. Uh, this is not an inexpensive undertaking, um, whether it be that or external elevators or all kinds of things. Um, Sky bridges, pedestrian bridges, often called sky bridges, if you care to Google these things, uh, um, come in lots of different flavors and varieties. I'm just providing a, some context and background for the kind of decision making we came through. So you can do sort of between two historic factory buildings, double decker, few windows, all wood, sort of industrial look. You can do in Minneapolis in the bottom right, steel beam, downtown, very urban example, contemporary uh, to parking garages, but also to office buildings. And then lower to the left, you could do uh, primarily glass. I mean, one of, the, one of the key elements for us was the more glass we could put in this, the more it's essentially going to disappear uh, in, in the look and skyline. So the proposal in our case is set back from William Street 107 feet. And you quite literally uh, just won't see it from Sandusky Street because of where it is in the angle of the building. So we think in terms of location, it's pretty good no matter what you, no matter how you clad it and how it's designed, as opposed to these examples, which are pretty prominent. Um, this is one in particular that we took a little design a cue from. This happens to be in Europe, uh, in the Netherlands, but it connects to a uh, much older building, frankly, uh, with a sky bridge. Uh, of a more contemporary nature, allowing the buildings to really uh, be on their own, not try to sort of comically create a, a, a sky bridge that never existed before uh, with those materials, let it stand on its own. This happens to be under a roadway, but it's kind of a secondary roadway. But it gives you a sense of mostly glass, a more solid metal header and uh, a, a metal bottom with some, I'll use the term ribs um, in it. I know our renderings appear to be very flat, and uh, we, we own the fact that our renderings uh, stunk. Okay? <laughs> so I'll just own that for you. Um, but as we go through, uh, that was kind of the design cue, and that's the, that's the sort of board and batten rib, however you want to <coughs> characterize it. That's the idea here. So this would be the view from across Sandusky. This is obviously more than 107 feet. It's 107 feet to the edge of the closest pavement. So once you account for the at least 66 feet of William Street, 
it's quite a bit more than that on this side. But you can also see the top of Edgar Hall and sort of that look as well, that, that top bank of windows. You can kind of see them out these windows, and there's, there's a little bit of design cue to this. So they, they kind of disappear from here. Uh, this is the rendering that, in my opinion, kind of stinks. And because it, it stinks because it looks very stark, and um, I mean the 3D rendering of the building is awesome. I mean that part's really great, uh, but we didn't take the step to skin the buildings in the in the brick color that they are. And so when you look at this, you're like, wow, that's a really urban, probably downtown Columbus or something. Now it's you have to take it with a little grain of salt. And, and the computer puts in the blue shadow cast on the windows and those sorts of things, rather than showing it really transparent, although it is here. And then I don't know if you picked it up in your packet, but you can start to see some of the ribbing here maybe a little bit easier than it is just hard to pack it. Um, so show you what we did uh, as staff. We took the fancy graphics and we uh, dumbed them down to our ability to use them, but uh, hopefully this puts a little bit more in context for you. So here's the alley. And the thing that jumps out at, at me is um, a lot of the overhead wires, frankly. So the first thing we have to do is remove those. Just, just that's a pretty good improvement. And of course, you know that's coming with the Cohat project. So that just anecdotally is wonderful. Um, and then we kind of fudged in that look of the bridge in its context uh, with the red brick in the actual buildings. It's this door right out here, right outside of council chambers. And if you open that, there's a little window in it. And that's right where you'd head across to, to the Gazette building, just to kind of orient you. So it's about 40 feet in total to get to from the door to the door, but there's only about 20 feet across the span that you're really going to see. Um, so I have the plans in here. These I think were much easier to read in your packets uh, than perhaps the renderings, but these are really if we need to refer to them. Uh, this is looking at the at this hallway right here is on the left side of the diagram. And uh, the Gazette buildings, the, the landing area on the Gazette buildings on the right side of the diagram here. Uh, you just get a sense of what we're trying to do. Here you get a little bit of the sense of the grade difference between this building and the Gazette where we're trying to land this pedestrian bridge as well. And in this rendering, you can see the steel I beams. Part of this and the reason to clad it is so that we can, it's up in the air, air circulating all through it. We need to get air through the passage and through the buildings as well, just in the two air handling systems between the buildings. And so, uh, and Jerry could talk more in detail about this if you want to, but um, to clad it in the material allows us to, obviously still needs to hold up the weight, and wind loads and all that kind of stuff, but uh, cladding it allows us to insulate it properly and, and provide that indoor environment within the, uh, within the passageway itself. A fair summary here? Yes. Okay. Uh, so one of the things we did is we took, we are proposing that metal uh, siding with ribs. Um, you can see in the packet as well, we did detail out the difference of cost between that and cladding it, say a hardy plank, um, which would be closer in look and appearance to the only other thing we have kind of like this in downtown, which is the very small sky bridge on the health district. It's a very different kind of space that it spans. Um, it's got HVAC units and all kinds of things back there and isn't used for cars, really people, although you can walk there. Um, and it's much smaller over there. And of course the buildings that attach to look uh, different. Um, but there is a difference in cost there uh, of, you know, the metal's about $6 a, a foot, the Hardy's about 10 a foot. And then we did take the uh, opportunity to look at if we wanted to use some sort of brick face <coughs> on there. Uh, of course, anything is technically possible with enough time and money. That's upwards of about thirty dollars uh, a foot. Frankly, right now the um, the budget for this is uh, at the metal. So anything over that would um, have to require city council ultimately to determine additional budget uh, or to cut out some other part of the project in order to make this happen. Um, so that's where we are. We think overall the design ethic of this is to try to just make it functional, hit those three marks, 
but visually kind of disappear as much as possible while still respecting the two buildings and, and clearly having it be what it is, a new sky bridge between the two, the two buildings. Uh, so that's the approach we took. Jerry, you got anything to add, or Terry? I think that um, we did look at using the I-beams and then try to do I-beams, mullions with the glass between it. My biggest concern is then is trying to get like a PTAC unit or a split system in there to, because it'll it'll frost up quick in the winter months. I think the whole thing would just frost up on the inside. We got to keep heat and air movement and, and keep it dehumidified. So the thought was to use the framing that they had. What had happened was we had a number of two hundred eighty thousand dollars from one architect for the Scott Bridge. We asked Terry to uh, get with Red. They drew up. And he gave us a number of one hundred. Seventy-five thousand, so I could have the hundred five thousand to go ahead and rebuild the transformers and bury all the electric. So that's that's where we're at. And that that's some of the steel beam conversation Jerry just gave us in response to yeah. well, uh, Commissioner. I think Joe asked about would it be possible maybe to have exposed that the I beams exposed. So that's the comments that Jerry. Yeah, we did. And we did look at that. The one in Manhattan, I mean, they did it there. I don't know how they did it there. I don't know what the inside was. But you think that would be so cold there that you needed it, you just, you just start frosting. Yeah. I don't I don't know that, how they did that. We were going to think about putting in a Mitsubishi split system in there so we can condition that space between the two buildings. Well, anyway, we are asking for formal passage so we can get budget set, see if there is enough to complete this and the renovation, our renovations, interior to the second story. Cohatch will pursue their own interior renovations on the first floor and the, in the basement um, and then take any other actions that might be required. Uh, one other action, uh, I think Chairman Hatton asked this question, one other action um, that would be required in this case is um, in my judgment, this amounts to a development plan exemption through planning commission. Um, so that would be uh, me determining that, which I just did. And uh, planning commission has to ratify that. Um, so that's another step. But per our normal process, would we have major exterior changes? It makes sense to come to HPC first and have these conversations kind of set the parameters of the project first and then go through the, the site planning portion of the, uh, of the approval process. I think that was all the questions I had had emailed to me or asked otherwise of me as well. In the scope of the project, we do ask for a, some direction approval and even on the materials if it could be one of those situations where if this is not acceptable to the majority of you tonight, uh, the chair and myself could work together for whatever might be acceptable that will keep our project moving. A uh, couple of questions for you, Dave. Um, you would mentioned square foot cost to save me from doing the math. You, I'm sure, have the cost. Can you tell me the for the three alternatives, what the total cost for the? I did not do that math. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's a price per square foot, isn't there, Dave? Yeah, there is. Yeah, I don't know how many All square right, feet so that. That's how many square I, feet is he asking? Uh, well, the, the distance is 20 feet between the buildings. Yeah, it's about seven foot by. Well, it's, it's more than 20. <laughs> it's, it's more than 20 on the south oh, it's side. About it's about 40. The north side is 20, and then we have two, yeah. and then five, so seven. I can try. 20, 140 times. Yeah. What the other architect do? <laughs> <laughs> Is that including the uh, square footage for the glazing? Or for the no, I was just looking for the no, three materials you talked about. Glazing is glazing. No, no, okay, that's not included in the 140. Yeah, the, the, those numbers include everything but the substrate. The, 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 the hundred and sorry Jerry. the hundred and seventy thousand or so budget figure on this now incorporates the metal as you right i just wondered what obviously you guys, I, I assumed you guys had done the math but. <laughs> had not done it in square foot we did it per foot okay. the, the full run this yeah. both sides is 300 square feet but does that include the windows though right or is that no that, that's the square footage right, right, of the yeah. metal area Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So we're in agreement that it's 300 square feet the for the metal area? Floor. No, sorry, the floor. I didn't realize you were asking. Yeah, we're looking at the sides because that's elevation. that's where the material would be on the two sides. Just 
and that'll do about 80 square feet it's about 300 square feet of the metal and it doesn't count the other south side of the building that goes across the road right. which would be another side of it there's probably about another 20 to 7 in there another 21 so we'll just start another 140 support 20 feet square feet you saw those total square footage Oh, yeah, so, so obviously what I'm trying to get at is what the, what the total cost right, between well, the, the three options are. The is 20 feet. <laughs> According to the uh, uh, plans here, if I'm reading that correctly, it's 2 feet, 5 to 3 eighths inches high on the bottom handle. Is that, or is that, uh, is the the windows, I guess, where's the glazing start versus the, uh, so. Model's about four, isn't it, Jerry? Four, yeah, four, it's like four and a half feet on the bottom, and, like, okay. and then at two feet about a It's That's about two and a half saying. feet on the top, about yeah. four and a half feet on the bottom. Okay, so six and a half. So say it's 100, 140 on the north side and 160 on the other side, 300 more or less. So we have 300 square feet of material in your costs again, Dave. I know one was 10 bucks. I don't remember which one. 650. 6, 6, 10, uh, 30. 30 was brick. Yeah, Hardy's about approximately 10. And the metal was six. Okay. So the, uh, the application says 650 for the metal. Is that correct? 650. Okay. Correct. Everybody's got the calculator now. Uh, about 1953K and 9K. I was going to say, I can do the Hardy plant pretty easy. <laughs> I got that one. Somewhere less 2,000, 3,000, 9,000. <laughs> Thank you. Dave, could you, go back to, <laughs> could you go back to your professionally done um, uh, view with the brick? Um, well, I was just, this is the professional. I, I know. I, know. I was trying to get the staff it. fudge version. I I know. Know. Um, <clears throat> I ask a question to clarify on the annex side. The walkway is appears as if it's being supported by the annex building itself. It's sitting on the roof of the annex building. Right. Um, the rendering doesn't show a column on the city hall side. There will be a column, an eight inch column. Yes. Underneath that's the on the structural drawings that they okay. there'll be two columns coming up here that'll that'll support those two beams. And then I would imagine what we're gonna end up doing is grouting that masonry rotting on the gazette side uh -huh. for those other beam bearing points. So they will not, they will be out, uh, they will be visible outside of the They'll be visible wall. outside okay. of that. There's a jog right there. Okay. Uh, there's a meter pack right behind there. There's a jog and they'll be sitting right flush with that setback. Yeah. And, and Dave, when you refer to metal, what are we talking about? Are we talking about aluminum cladding? Is it, uh, it's, it's just, it's not structural, right? So it's just a cover. It's a cladding. It's a cladding. Is it yeah. just like storefront aluminum? No, steel. Steel. Or steel. Yeah. Pre-finished. Yes. Pre-finished. <clears throat> and am I correct? The color would be some sort of an ebony. It's not it can be. Yeah. We were. We oh. just. We just went black with the match the windows. Okay. Makes sense. Sorry. White windows here. The black ones. Yeah. Yeah. Could, I, I think the white will show. I mean, lighter will show dirt more, obviously, through the year. Black is less likely to do that. So, in the in the and again, I know this is one you guys kind of tack together, but in that uh, in that view, uh, the uh, bottom span and metal cladding is continuous all the way. You don't have that bump out of the brick that's actually supporting it. Is that is that just uh, you know something that was goofed on when you put that, or is that is that a thought that that would continue? Because to me, that's brick, what, the, I think the brick is, <coughs> the brick is there. Oh, I can't it is there. Right now. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. it's hard to see from here. Right, Jerry. It's in. It's in here. 
That's that. Uh, on brick. that side. On that side. Is yeah. that brick or is yeah, that? That's, it was, okay, brick. that's that brick. On the left side, that is a brick bump out there. Yeah. Okay. Look, yeah. It, from here, it just it kind of looks like flat. Yeah. 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 So, so I just wondered if that was a different iteration of that. Yeah. Um, and then, then the door is about on that side. It's about halfway well, down the building. Yeah, another twenty feet, and then we can go into the building. Yeah. How far does the bump out protrude north of the actual span? Uh, it's about the width of that sidewalk. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I mean, um, actually, because the one thing that kind of catches my eye in the rendering, and you can see it more clearly on the professionally one done, where you wipe you off see the that jaw in it. That jaw right in it. To me, that just visually looks kind of jarring, and I just wondered if that was. But that's. Um, I guess it's basically it's not flush with that. Um, that elevation of the bump out. I know it, but, and I've stared at that, but the actual bump out <laughs> is flush with the back of the highest, the second floor of the building. And in the other drawing, they showed that parapet wall coming down, which would just bring that beam right on over. If that were flush and you continued, you know, and it didn't have that jog in it, I think that would look a lot better. Because to me, I just. Well, it would. But yeah, so are you saying now that the, the beam is is flush with the, the uh, bump out or that bump out that bump out is right where the second floor goes up. So the and we were gonna go ahead and, and that parapet would come down, then that beam would set on. So in reality, that beam would set out with that end, it should bring the, the metal all the way over to the building. Not like that. So you would actually not have that job. Right. I think that would look a lot better. I agree. I agree. That's Was he talking about this yeah. part of it? Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you kept it yeah. you know, across, mm -hmm. you know, it just looks weird. Yeah. Like that. It was basically this yep. here, and that comes out. Yep. So, Dave, one of the reasons I asked you about the process was um, I'm thinking around. This is this is a big deal, right? <laughs> We don't have any of these. We're not Des Moines or Minneapolis. Um, even Columbus, you know, there's there certainly are some downtown in Columbus, but for instance, in the short north or German Village, there are none, of course. Um, I can't think of a historic district in Ohio. I don't know if you guys did any research that that has one of these. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure there will be a historic district that has a sky bridge if you. Gave me enough time. Yeah, I'd, find I'd, like them, but. To, I'd like to know. You know, certainly you pointed out one of your old things in, in old factories and things. It's very common, right, where they connected buildings to haul things back and forth inside the weather. Um, and, and my concern is just that this is a. a I, I get that it's 170 feet down the alley. Um, it's a. It's a big change. It's something we haven't done before. And as we've discussed on this commission many times, um, it does create a precedent. And I, 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 I have very strong feelings um, when the city asks for special disp disp uh, special treatment that they that we don't extend to other property owners and taxpayers downtown. So I, I try and think: Would we allow this? Between any other buildings, I understand you know the idea behind it. it's a different use. It's public versus private, although it's kind of public and private here. Um, but I'm thinking, as we have some infill and those sort of things, what if we had a property owner that said, "Hey, that's the neatest thing ever. I'd like to have my two restaurants side by side that aren't located, you know, that have a gap. I'd love to have that sky bridge. That'd be awesome." So, I'm. I'm I guess where I'm going with this is I'd like to have some part of this where there was some opportunity for public input other than this meeting. Because let's face it, this is not particularly uh, advertised quite as well as a city council meeting. City council has three readings for a reason to give people the opportunity to come in. I'm, I'm not comfortable, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm not comfortable doing this without any kind of public input. And if I understand you, basically you said you you can make the decision to bypass uh, planning and uh, planning no, zoning. The planning, com there would, there have been other, first of all, what I would suggest is that it's this commission's purview on the design of it. No, I get that. So 
that aside. Second, I would suggest that uh, my decision on an exemption has to be ratified by planning commission. So it goes to planning commission in a public meeting. Right. But beyond and before and after all that, city council decides on the budget and whether, which really sets whether they're just going to do this or not as the elected body for the community. Right. So they've determined the budget. Uh, there may be some more budget determinations to go in an open public forum, to your point as well. Um, so it would help us to know we really we have to start somewhere and okay. it would help us to know we've councils kind of started with the budget discussion but it would help us to know in the context of the budget discussion what's potentially approvable by this body obviously you know i suppose council could you know peel its own case to itself again <laughs> but uh, discussion right before. but um what might be acceptable in terms of cladding, because it does have some budget implications, which we'd have, Jerry and I would have to take back to the manager and council and have more public meetings, <laughs> right? <laughs> council meetings. So I think there's a lot of public discussion about it. Okay. Um, well, uh, so the, for me, it's fairly de minimis, although I understand it, it's hard because there is no, we, we have no guidelines. We have no standards I'm to apply saying. to this. So you're, in essence, asking us to do what we, by by code aren't supposed to do. I'm asking you to do that. Is that <laughs> which is, yes, which I is am. look at this very subjectively. So from a very subjective standpoint, I I think we could do better on the design. I, I it seems kind of like a first effort. Um, because of what it is, uh, I guess you can look at it one of two ways. You can hide it or you can make it an interesting addition to our downtown landscape. The the what, the, what would make it interesting? Well, how long you have? I mean, no, give, me, give me your thoughts. Well, well I think all six of us would probably have different thoughts. And and honestly, since we just got the packages, that that's kind of the other issue. We just got these packets a couple of days ago, so it's not like I've had a lot of time. Nor am I a design professional, um, but I know what I like, right? Like most people, um, I, I just I'd like to see something that would tie it. Uh, so the trust. The, the guidelines, the National Trust guidelines require if for new infill buildings, for instance, that they pay homage, but don't try and duplicate. Uh, I'll pick on downtown Dublin. Downtown Dublin put up fake buildings. They created fake history, right? That's again, we could not do that down here. So the idea would not to be to put something to try and age it and make it look like it's been here a hundred years. But but this looks kind of very industrial, very you know raw steel sort of thing. Where I'm wondering, you mentioned brick. I don't know if brick's the answer, but it just seems like something. You know, think of bridge design, and, and we can't bring John Roebling back to design it. But you know, there are beautiful bridges, for instance, John Roebling design, and then there are just bridges. So if we could if we could have some sort of maybe I could defer to our we do have a design professional on here, mm -hmm. you know that's the the devil's in the details right so I so I guess I can't tell you what that is but I can tell you this to me seems very basic very back in the envelope this is very to me this was built by an engineer and not a designer right he said yep like you said we got to have the air handlers we got to have this. And I think what designers do is, is take that and say, how can we make that do all those things? How can we make it functional, but, but have interesting form? Yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel. So I got to find $50,000 more. I just need a feel of what you guys want. Anybody else want to land? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to refer back to the uh, note I sent Dave, just, you know, kind of asking the question about, you know, and probably going the exact opposite direction, as you say, six people, six different <laughs> opinions. But my thought was that looked way too contemporary. So I agree with you in that sense that it just kind of looks, okay, this is functional, it'll do the job, and good enough. And that's why I was kind of like, you know, I was almost intrigued by the idea of making it look more structural, and you know, and I understand the uh, the issue with that, but you know, just it's almost kind of like you're, you know, um, as you say, do you want it to fade into the background, but not it doesn't really, or do you want to just try to have something that okay, it looks like it belongs there, and and again, I thought, you know, I've seen, you know, maybe not 
skywalks, but certain, you know, connectors that look more structural and they actually look like, okay, it looks like that's something that, you know, belongs between two old buildings, you know. That looks like it belongs on a, you know, a 1980s, you know, campus. Um, uh, you know, it, it just, to me, it just doesn't, it doesn't really, uh, you know, as per the standards, it doesn't really reflect the, you um, uh, the surrounding architecture. So you're thinking they'll pull in that front high beam structure and that look and, and bring it in into that bridge. Well, to me, I thought that would look a lot less, yeah. you know, uh, contemporary. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a direction that I should go? Well, that's, no, again, that's just one guy. No, 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 I'm asking yeah. the board. Well, let's ask for yeah. Yeah, put on the um, board. Yeah. What, yeah. What we did try to do is the with the storefront try to match the uh, the windows mm -hmm. and also match the pergola out front. So yeah. with that being in mind, we try to blend it in as much as we could without trying to do that. Just like you said, yeah. have a stone, 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 or a brick, 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 with such a high cost. So we're yeah. trying to get some kind of combination of all two of the buildings and. Bring that together. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the pergola because in the note I sent to Dave, I actually I kind of mentioned the pergola, you know, has the I beam elements to it. And I thought that's why I thought, you know, having the structural, you know, having it look more structural might, you know, somewhat complement what you're doing with the uh, the pergola with the I beams. Having the brick, if we do a thin set brick, it's going to one, I'm I'm the one I think because everybody that was here last week. I'm trying to save as much money as I can, obviously. Yeah. I'm also trying to save as much time as I can being a contractor, but I'm also trying to stop that <clears throat> um, roadway that's used a lot. We'll have to shut that down. And for time and everything else, it's going to be shut down a lot more if we try to do that. We could go and have a designer do that and raise the cost even more just by having, as you mentioned, a designer come in and put a lot more design to it and all that. That's Going to raise costs even more, but I appreciate what you're saying and just trying to you know, blend what we can in together. We're, we're also considering long term maintenance for obviously that's on public dollar. Well, sure. Mr. Yeah. Nesson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, it's going to sound odd coming from someone on an historical preservation commission, but as was pointed out, we don't really have any standards for sky bridges and they didn't exist in history uh, beyond, say, the last 50 years or so for the most part. Uh, I think I would actually, just as, a, as an, a personal point of view on this, I would advocate maybe a totally radically different approach from what was suggested, rather than playing, trying to play up some history and make it look historical in a way that it really is not. Um, if you think about the Secretary of the Interior Standards, the third item there says changes that create a false sense of historical development, dot, 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 shall not be undertaken. Uh, I would recommend go the opposite direction. Make this, as it says there, a record of its physical, or re physical record of its time, place, and use. Make it look modern. It's a, it's a little sky bridge between two historical buildings. Play up something in Delaware's history. Make it look unique and something that catches people's eye. And, and go in that direction as sort of the bridge between the past and the future. Well, that, that is kind of where we were coming from within the budget we had to operate in. Uh, in addition to making it mostly glass and sort of transparent. That that's sort of where we're going from. I think you're uh, you're taking it a step further into that. Yeah. You know, anyway, I think I think that's an echo of a uh, ironically of Mr. Coleman's statement that this is it's very functional looking. And so I, I think it's with respect kind of the, the worst of both worlds. Um, but I would like to see something done to give it a little more aesthetic value to it. To, to make it part of that future history of the downtown. I tend to agree with you. Um, it's functional, it's modern looking, uh, it's back off the street, I think it's fine. Just as it is even. I would have to agree as well. I think the only thing I would probably change is make the windows matching the buildings. I think that would I add agree. more yes. character. Good point. Go with the grid. Yeah, I think it would add more character Tying in the two buildings. That's great. Um, I like that. Right? Um, and also talk about the history. Um, walking downtown here, um, there's a few buildings that I've sold that 
during renovations, we actually found skywalks in between the buildings, archway bricks that were actually closed up over time. Um, also too, sandwiched between buildings, you'll see vertical skywalks that were once closed up, but was visible to the street. So I wanna say, yeah, though we're not, this is totally different than that, but in history, we did have those. Hmm. So anyways. Um, yes, I think that uh, the direction is a good direction. I think that it should be functional. I think that it's in an alley, um, it's back in a loading area, it's supposed to have a secondary feel to it. Um, I like the possibility of going a little bit more industrial to make it feel um, more engineered and functional. Um, I also know that the cost of these things goes up quite a bit when you add um, details that seem simple can often be very expensive. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I would like to see a rendering um, of cleaning up that corner, as Joe pointed out, where it sits on the corner, if it's possible for there to be a clean line at the bottom. I think we can do that. You can do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd also like to see the rendering with the column showing. Um, I know, again, it would be nice if that column were not there, if it were embedded in the wall somehow, but I also know that that's an additional cost. A couple of thoughts that I've had since we're talking about this is, is if we could go back to Joe's earlier email, if I think I would like this more if it were to go fully structural on the thing where the I-beams were exposed somehow so that we could see, instead of covering it up, if we could see what those were. I think the other problem I have, and I understand the idea that the, the kind of endless glass makes it disappear. The endless glass to me makes it look like a modern suburban office building. I'd, I'd love to see if those were either shrunk down or duplicated in size by the, if, you, if we saw these two buildings side by side, the, the um, dimensions of the windows are pretty similar in, as far as uh, height over width. Something to me, just that all glass looks like, and I used to live in Des Moines and did a lot of time in Minneapolis, so I spent a lot of time in skywalks. That looks like one of those skywalks with that just endless glass. And normally you've got, you know, that again, if we could get horizontal and vertical structural pieces into it, I think it would be a lot more interesting. I, I think I know what you're talking, we do a beam, we'll do I-beam vertical off pipes to an yes. I-beam top, mm -hmm. hold the bar joist on it, and then mull it in between. Yeah. And if we could match the the, the grouping to the... Um, uh, Still got to insulate. Oops. To the, yeah, so I, I understand there's always going to be some engineering issues, but if, I think that would also tie back to the pergola on the front, and if we could kind of have those that that look and feel kind of tie in, I think, yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't want it to look, I don't want to make it try and look like it was there for a hundred years. But Should we throw the grid work in then too? Like, I'm not a big yeah. fan of fake grid work. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a rendering now and show it. Yeah. I think I mean, you can see it both ways, maybe. Your, I think one, I, Seems like a lot. Nothing against the computers and all this, but this throws everybody off. Yeah, that yeah. view throws everybody off, and nothing, David. Against there you go. That is much better, but it's still missing some of the the details that you're looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I think a better rendering, you guys would probably it, it'd be okay. Uh, that's how I'm looking. I'm a simple man, but I think it'd be a little bit easier to see and understand. Um, doing the rendering is going to cost money. Doing additional engineering is going to cost money, and. Uh, time, which right. none of us have. I mean, I care about collapse lot ties in just this time. You take the front elevation of collapse vertical to the steel I beams, but the steel I beams up, change the windows, the warehouse windows, and you're done. It's a warehouse mm -hmm. building. That's mm -hmm. what that building wants. It's a new stand. It's a side mm -hmm. building. Yep. I think the big exactly. volume are warehouse. You take them back from the I beams and that the front view is all the same. I think if you could do something like that, it would. I think it definitely would look like it fit a lot better, you know, and again, yeah. it's not fake old, but 
Yeah. But I think it, it pays homage, as you pointed out, to those yeah. connectors that were that were in factories. If you go up to Cleveland and look at all mm -hmm. the old, you know, there are all those connectors out there, and they're generally very functional. So they're I beams that are now rusted, <laughs> you know. So they're I beams that I think would would tie into the design on the front, and and add some interest to that because. I agree, if you're driving by, nobody's gonna see it, right? But when you're walking by, I think that could, so to me, it's one of those things where you look back and you either go, eh, or you look back and kind of go, ooh, that's kind of cool, you know? And, and I'd rather, if we can, go to go for the ladder. And yeah. <laughs> so we're, <clears throat> to summarize, and you tell me if I'm summarizing wrong. Uh, <clears throat> get some more of the industrial look with exposed I-beams or steel beams to the extent we can, particularly on the bottom. And just expose the structure, essentially. Expose the structure, make it a little more structural looking. Uh, make the window divides, although they're horizontally and, and, and vertically about proportional, but try to make those appear more like maybe the Gazette buildings or the or the uh, only in size city hall in size and scale. I, I know we have but a no, difference, but, but no, don't put the fake moyas. Perhaps, perhaps no fake moyas. Seems Please like no. there's a little disagreement <laughs> there. Uh, still keep it black. What was my? Uh, I think it was it. With uh, they, they kind of talked about your corner, for lack of yes. a better word. The whole I'll, I'll try to get better rendering, I'll some of rendering which may show you some volumes and some of which may not show you some volumes. We're we okay to take another, come back in a month with I, some I, of those? I gotta get, I'm going to draw this thing and then go back to Terry to see where I'm at number-wise. Are we okay to take another month, though, and come back I think, I, is that to the commission? The electrical move. i got to get, well, I, the, the POs are just going through, so I'll start digging and, and if we start the moving transport. up in the cost, then that, we're going to eat up into that one. Well, I know that. That's why I need to go back to you. See if I can. <laughs> well, so come on, we'll do our job. Uh, square foot on the car. Well, so yeah, beyond we'll the staff uh, impromptu meeting that's going on here for tonight, <laughs> You could go one of two ways. You could certainly approve it with those items we just you just mentioned and ha make sure of that by having the chairman and myself agree. And obviously, if Mark doesn't agree, he's going to say he's got to go back to the board, and 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 that's fine. Or if I don't agree, um, we can also, as part of that process, we could get the renderings done and, and allow by email allow you all to look at that and, and chime in too, if that makes because it is a little different. Make make sure that everybody's feeling okay. It might make Mark feel a little better about which way he's going on it. Or we could table it, just ask you to table the case tonight and come back in a month. I think there's some problem is there's dominoes of budget that fall here as you just were kind of hearing. So right. you know time's a little of the essence. Yeah. Or we could have a special meeting. I mean personally <laughs> something everybody left. I would be <laughs> I, me personally, I would be fine with, you know, um, you know. Uh, putting out a uh, you know uh, an approval based on administrative approval of the final details you know pending you know uh, some renderings and you know more detailed information about the materials and you know what they're gonna you know what the design is actually gonna look like because I think we're mostly I mean it sounds like there's a consensus and it sounds like you guys feel the same way that that could work I would I would maybe say since since this is a really weird thing anyway we're, we're, we have no standards to apply let's go ahead and, and if we have the renderings they're electronic let's email it out it, it'd be maybe more of a straw poll and you know then I at least I have direction because I don't want to go hey that's a, I love that and then you guys all go oh, what are you thinking um, so why don't we can do that. We've, we've done that at least once in the past. I know it's probably a little... Yeah, I think that will allow it to continue for it. I, like I say, I still have to go to Planning Commission. They meet next first Wednesdays of the month, so obviously next week is out for this. Um, it would have to be then the following month, so that's another domino in the in the timeline as well okay. that we have to go through, in addition to budgeting and council and that sort of thing. So, so email? Do we want to do an administrative mm. approval with email like we just? Why, why don't we start there? And and if it, if we 
don't have a consensus, yeah. then we can have the meeting because, as you said, we can put it. What would we need two weeks or ten days before the meeting? Yeah, and if, so that's what I'm thinking. If you do a formal administrative approval and aligns with everything we just said, and for some reason we need to come back as a group, we can either set a special meeting to do that, or we can do it in in August. And which would still give you then time for to go to planning out. Yeah, I just know Jerry. He's by the time I come into the office tomorrow morning. He's right. going to have but, but my point was, you said you can't you can't make the next week's planning meeting, right? So you're talking about I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, but I need to get this part done, get back to council with the budget, and then get. I think planning's probably the most fairly perfunctory of it, given the history of development plan exemptions. But you know, subject to their ratification, okay. of course. Yeah. Let's email electronic fallback. August meeting. Does so that work? Yeah. Do we need, I don't know, do we need a motion? I so guess we should have a motion. Yeah, we to, should. It's Probably, uh, yeah. I would like yeah. uh, Someone care to make a motion? Uh, what we want to say, <laughs> no, <laughs> not that quickly. Um, you could say a motion for what the chairman just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's got to write it all down somehow. It's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, do we want to like just read those back slowly and we'll write them down or? The two or three main points there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I so think one of the first points would be uh, revised design that is more mm -hmm. structural, that is similar to the Pergola I beams. Mm -hmm. uh, windows that are more consistent with the proportions on the two existing buildings. Um, a clean line on the bottom, if possible, where the uh, bridge meets the bump out. And is there anything else? Um, and then subject to um, email review and administrative approval. Yeah. Sounds good. You want to make that a motion, Mr. Coleman? Aaron, you, uh, you have it down pretty clearly. <laughs> I'd like to go ahead and do it. That's fine, or I can. Why don't you just do it? Either one. <laughs> that's a motion. Why don't you second it? That could work. You guys have enough. Is that enough for a motion? Okay. Okay. I'll second that. All right. We have a motion and a second. Can you call the vote, please? Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Herring? Yes. Mr. Nicely? Yes. Ms. Riviera? Yes. Ms. Van Gundy? Yes. Chairman Hatton? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, last item on the regular business agenda is 2018-1727, a request by Indus Hotels for an informal review for the proposed demolition and construction of a hotel at 7 and 27 Spring Street which are zone B3, which is community business district, and located in the traditional sub-district of the downtown historic district overlay. Staff, do you have a report? I do have a quick report. It's obviously an informal review. The applicant was stuck in traffic, and I have their, their presentation here, so there may be a little flipping around here once I'm done. Well, we killed two hours. We, we did kill two hours. <laughs> Kind of knew this was going to be a long one. That's okay. It's important cases. So uh, this proposal is at 7 and 27 Spring Street. It would be uh, the demolition of the two existing structures that are on site and uh, eventually lead to the construction of a six-story hotel in downtown as proposed. Again, with this, um, there are a number of potential other steps that could include uh, variances, uh, to various parts of the zoning code could include, would definitely include development plan review by planning commission and city council, um, which would be separate steps, and could include, as we'll go through here, uh, a zone change as well, and perhaps a change to our sub-district to be in conformance with that zone change, not unlike what we did with some of the county complex on the north side of town. So. Let's walk through it a little bit. So it is on Spring Street between Franklin and South Sadesky. It's on south side of Spring Street, uh, immediately west of the uh, old post office, now Ross Art Museum, 
and then the parking uh, tiers for the Hamilton Williams Center to the west of that. In terms of zoning, the zoning today is B3, Community Commercial District. Uh, it is not the downtown B2 district. The B3 district, as the applicant knows, uh, does not allow hotels. And so a rezoning would be required, uh, most likely in this case, to be the B2 downtown commercial district. It could potentially be to the planned office institutional district that allows hotels as conditional as well to be determined. But most likely, in our opinion, to do the B2 district, which is in part across the street from here. Um, the historic district uh, is, is today in the transitional sub-district. Um, and again, uh, if the B2 zoning district is favored or perhaps even the POI, it probably makes some sense to accommodate this within the downtown uh, core district rather than a transitional district, especially given the context on this side of South Spring Street uh, that we're talking about with some massive structures on this side, uh, Hamilton Williams building being uh, one of them. <laughs> So here's the two facilities, and then there's an open lot, which is used for parking, and a large retaining wall, again, that goes up to the tiered parking for the Hamilton Williams Center. Some design cues um, a bit uh, with respect to Delaware, the old Allen Hotel, uh, which was not in this location, but which was a large uh, footprint hotel in the downtown. Uh, here you see it in the postcard rendering. You have it in your packet as well. A little bit of nod to the uh, brewery uh, that was on the corner where the post office, now Ross Museum, stands, but it was, a, it was a larger facility than that footprint at that time as well. All eventually demolished, but you see a little bit of uh, at least what one presumes to be red brick. I realize it's black and white, uh, but some of the window openings and such, and then the, uh, the guys out front with the kegs of beer. So. Uh, here's the view from the north side of Spring Street to the two existing facilities, the Napa Auto Parts, and then uh, it was an auto repair facility on the left side of the street now, uh, as we understand Napa uses it for storage. You get just sort of different views of this, and you see the, the open parking lot, and you start to see the large retaining wall, which gets larger the farther south you get on this site, although it, it starts off very large up here Spring Street as well. And you can see the top of the Hamilton Williams Center, at least from the street level view, peeking up above these uh, two story structures. So the elevations and the applicant tonight uh, has been asked to, and I think they have put these elevations in better context for the street structure. We'll, we'll know when we let it, their presentation let them go, but six stories. There is some grade change here. Usually we're dealing with just flat ground, Delaware, um, but there is quite a bit of grade change here. Um, in addition, you can see a pull-off or a drop-off area with a little um, covered section in front of the hotel. Uh, the drop-off area will come off of Spring Street. And that pushes the building back in the site just a little bit. That would be the preferred design alternative at this conceptual stage to the city. Again, uh, lots of hedgy words because we're at the conceptual stage now. Uh, but that puts the uh, some of that pull off traffic, drop off, go in, check in, get your car, go park it off of Spring Street itself, separating the traffic. Just another rendering, you can see that they've accounted for trash and the dumpster enclosure and sort of the service sides of, of these structures. Now the materials are, um, it is shown as in these renderings, sort of white brick and stone, again that nod, a little bit to that Allen Hotel, you'll see our notes of staff. Um, it seems to be a sort of a red brick environment there, particularly with the Hampton Williams Center, but that's our opinion to be discussed. Um, and they also are proposing some zinc metal panels, which um, again, we think probably could have a, an accent. This would be a brand new building, obviously not a historic building, um, but perhaps is a bit overdone in that front elevation in just conceptual informal review. These are line drawings just to show us, you can see the, <coughs> Be six or five stories of the zinc metal panel there. Um, you can see the height's about 70 feet tall in gray uh, in six stories. Just walking around the building, the east elevation, south elevation, very similar. Again, that backs up to what would be a large retaining wall and, and uh, lots of uh, fairly mature vegetation on the other side on uh, the Owu campus. 
and then the west elevation which would face the parking tiers uh, for the Hamilton Williams Center. So the proposed site plan of parking, um, again this is all conceptual, um, but some of the parking would be uh, across the street in lots and some of the parking as it's conceived of today and formally would be actually on some of the on street spaces. Again there are many decisions to go with respect to this as well that ultimately wind in a, a city council decision on those aspects of it. A couple of options for the site plan. This one more brings the building forward towards Spring Street and the drop off area utilizing really bump outs in the street. Again, the preferred alternative at this conceptual stage would be to push the building back kind of into that into that hillside area and really have a, a off street drop off area from a site plan perspective. Dave, if it were pushed forward, does that allow parking behind or is that not enough space? Not, and not really. Access? Not with okay. the footprint of the building, there's, there's kind of no way to get back to. Right. <laughs> okay. With that, I'm going to stop. It's an informal review. I'm going to ask you to come forward more and help me figure out which file it is on here <laughs> and let you do your presentation. Sure. Make sure this all works properly. Should pop up, no? Yellow or HPC? This one? All right, I'm just going to drag it out for work. In here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So this moves you forward, this moves you back, and if you hold this, you get a gyroscopic point. Fancy. I'm still learning how to use it. All right. Uh, name, address, maybe what your relationship to the applicant is? Sure. I'm Warren Bath. Uh, I'm the architect on the project with OHM Advisors. Um, Working with Indus. Do you need your address? Yeah, there you go. 580 North 4th Street. Thank you. Suite 610. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this is going to be redundant, so we're going to go ahead and skip through to the uh, more contextual stuff that David was referring to. Okay, so I want to back up one real quick. We've been working a little bit further on the site. If you look how we have the building positioned currently in this one, um, we've pushed it kind of more of like an in-between spot. And the reason for that was we wanted to continue having the drop off, but we had to have the building a certain distance from the street to be able to have um, the openings not be rated. Um, we're also looking at trying not to have the building pushed all the way back because the grade, there's a 20 foot grade difference from the beginning of the site to the south to the back of the building. Uh, this is just some local context. We're looking at what kind of colors were in um, the Delaware downtown area currently. Elevations. So this is an elevation of the building in context where you have the campus center to the right, and I'm not sure what the building is to the left, but the one that's just adjacent there on Spring Street. Uh, Ross. 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 So you can see that our building is six stories, but because of the grade change, the campus center is actually pretty comparable to the height of the building. This is a kind of compo or transposed rendering where I just wanted to show how the view is going to be obstructed by the building and how it's going to change streetscape. And this is the other side. Um, I think this shows the relationship between the campus center, the proposed height of the building. Also, when we're talking about the uh, zinc panels being a, uh, a kind of nod or accent, I also just want to point out how kind of goes back to the Pantino, the roof of the campus center. 
And these are some updated renderings. And that's it. Or I just say thank you for um, as quickly as you did, given the contextual renders that for myself that helps. That was very helpful. Thank you. I also have samples of uh, the bricks, the stone, and the zinc panel. If anyone wants to see it. Do you have them here? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, if you want to give them to one of those two and they can pass them down. Yeah, so thank you. While they're doing that, commission, comments, thoughts, feedback for them? Mr. Nice, well, you look like you're ready. Yeah, I can just, in, in general terms, I'll say, I mean, going through this, this informal, uh, in looking at all the different factors, there are certain things that obviously jump out as things that are very clearly not in compliance with the standards for the transitional subdistrict uh, currently, <laughs> such as the height, um, the, uh, the parking on the sides of the building, um, arguably potentially the color palette itself, uh, and on and on and on. So I mean, I think that's sort of the, the main thing is if this is going to remain in the transitional subdistrict, there's a lot to consider that would require variances as it's currently presented. So. Uh, I mean, we can circle back around to that probably as we go through different elements to kind of give our feedback, but okay. that's my initial thought. Um, well, a couple things. Uh, one, I, I think uh, a point uh, Dave brought up regarding um, a project such as this, you know, whatever form it ultimately were to take, um, might be more appropriate if it were in the core district as opposed to the sub district, because that is. I mean that's that's out of scale for the core district, but it's even way, it's even further out of scale for the sub district. And I think uh, to me it, it probably makes sense that those uh, standards are probably at least closer to what's proposed than the sub district. Um, that's one. Um, then just you know uh, again it's an informal proposal, <coughs> so I'm just going to kind of. Uh, list some of the things that I guess uh, jump out at me and I think Aaron um, actually hit on some of those is and the city uh, staff also did I think you know the color palette I, I mean I um, it's a nice looking building but I'm not sure that it actually is a nod to the Allen Hotel and I'm not to me it doesn't um, it doesn't to me it's a jarring contrast actually to uh, the rest of the district or much of the rest of the district. I would prefer to see something that does stay uh, more uh, within the traditional palette materials used on the majority of the buildings downtown. There are some that, you know, are more probably closer to that palette, but I think the majority of them are more of a red brick um, uh, palette, in some cases a buff brick. Um, so I think, you know, to me it, it would I'd feel better about it if it were more uh, in keeping with uh, the dominant materials downtown. Um, the other thing that I that jumps out at me is the setback. I see, you know, you do have the two uh, siding options, and I do like the site plan option number one better. That's more in keeping, and again, going back to the standards that uh, <coughs> uh, infill buildings uh, should um, be built up to the back of the sidewalk. Uh, the phrase missing teeth jumps to mind. Now, even that's, you know, in this context, it's a little different because it's not surrounded by other buildings. But I think, you know, in terms of the precedent it sets, especially for such a large building to have that setback, I'm concerned that that creates a, um, uh, a precedent for having other infill projects uh, similarly sited. And I think part of what makes the downtown unique um, uh, makes it exciting is you know the sidewalk to facade transition bringing it out to the sidewalk I think that's you know more in keeping with the traditional downtown which again the standards are uh, geared toward not necessarily recreating history or some Disney-esque you know version of historical architecture but at least you know uh, trying to keep the streetscape uh, consistent with that historic, you know, um, uh, pattern in terms of development. So, I would uh, I would be very concerned about option number two in terms of the setback 
for the third option that you presented, which is kind of a medium between the two. I think so, I think option one would be um, much more in keeping, and I think it would, you know, I think a project such as this, it's such an imposing project, you know, um, you know vastly different than anything else we could, we've had come before us. And I think we've got to be very careful about, you know, approaching this um, as best we can within the standards, even though, again, this thing is, I uh, got a lot of things going for it, even outside of the siting plan that you know are going to um, uh, require variances and a lot of discussion. So those are really the two key things you know that jump out at me. Other thoughts? Again, this is an informal mm -hmm. review, so um, we're not. We can certainly refer back to the standards but this is an opportunity to maybe provide a little more objective feedback than they would if this were an actual application. You know, yeah. I, it's I, objective, I'm sorry. They could actually, I would actually like to, to ask you, the applicant, um, if you could actually give us a little bit of your thought process, because I know you mentioned in the, the paperwork that there was a nod to various historical call-outs. Um, some of them I can see, some of them I don't see as readily. I'd love to know your thoughts on, on what you're seeing whenever you're presenting this. Sure. Um, I think one of the images that caught me off the beginning was actually uh, a picture of the Allen when it had been painted white. It was a black and white picture. Um, and to me, it just looked much more, um, I guess I would say, fresh. Um, so what I was going for in the design was basically I wanted to respect the historic proportions. But I wanted to keep the palette fresh so that the hotel didn't feel dated. Um, when I'm looking at this and, and you're saying, well, where are the historic proportions? It's got a base, it's got a middle, and it has the cornice as, you know, is defined in your, in your guidelines. And it also, you know, the, for us, the windows were a struggle because the current windows for the hotel are, are two to one. Whereas your proportions are one to two. So we had to put two windows into the rooms to get those proportions to get the same amount of glass as the hotel brand is going to require to um, actually meet the standards and get it to look more in line with your, um, your standards. So I guess when you look at it, is it a copy of a historic Delaware building? It's not. There are a lot of nods to modernism but there's also a lot of nods to um your classical standards as they're actually defined in your standards like I, there is no standard for the or there was no definition for color in the standards and so i might have ran with that a little bit but to me it it, it definitely looks historic without feeling dated i think i could feel a little bit more historic with awnings i think that would Okay. Um, yeah, I think it would. I think at least on the first two floors. I don't know your opinions on that, but I think that would make it feel more. Hmm. I'm actually interested and okay with the, the play with the colors. Um, one of the things that makes downtown vibrant is there's so much going on. There's a lot of variety. Um, there's all kinds of detailing from storefront to storefront, building to building. And this is three flat faces. It's too simple. There's not um, liveliness to it. It's very stoic. Um, and then on the proportions, one of the things that throws me off is the first floor. Uh, historically, the first floor would have a higher um, floor to ceiling elevation and so it it doesn't feel any the pediment of that doesn't feel any um, more significant than the rest of the proportions of the building um, and I'm kind of concerned so you did the proportions of the windows but you had to put two together to meet brand standards but I don't know that a hotel room has to have I think I would be okay with two windows in a hotel room that were separated. They don't have to be together to um, they have, meet um, 
So it I guess have a, a PTAC unit, which is like the air conditioner inside the unit. Yeah. And for yeah. that to actually fit in the room with the furniture, it has yeah. to be in the middle. Yeah. So that's why the but, two windows are but together. I think, and but middle. I think that that might be where we might ask for. I, I don't know. Is that where we ask for so, looking at alternates to get a, the proportion of the windows correct? So so at this point, informal, it's just That's feedback. You, we can ask for anything, right? Well, but I mean, like, at, <laughs> they, they've come, part of the so, so the idea behind why we instituted informal reviews was so that um, exactly what we're doing tonight, an applicant could come in front of yeah. us and kind of get a feel for where they were going rather yeah. than show up usually on a tight timeline. I know it's always a tight timeline, right? But but at least so that it's not, they come in and they're like, wow, you are 180 degrees away, right? And, and so if you think of, uh, and I know you and I weren't at the last meeting, but the informal review with the Cohatch building allowed them to come tonight and, and pretty much have everything buttoned down, right? Not 100%, but they were closer than they were when they were for the informal review. Yeah. So yeah, I think, you know, ask away, uh -huh. pick brains, yeah. whatever you want to do. Yeah. Warren, I do have a question about the PTAC units. We have uh, a number of hoteliers uh, looking at city Delaware, as you know, um, and we've had this discussion about those units in particular because they can have a, uh, a particularly visual look to them. Mm -hmm. um, jarring look on the outside if you're trying to fit into, in this case, the store district. Um, and I don't recall the name, the alternative unit that they described. You guys might know off the top of your head, but there was a different kind of unit that wasn't the traditional PTAC unit that essentially could um, visually disappear or disappear better on the exterior of the building. Um, I get you that, but I'm, I'm wondering if you've explored that in other, obviously in this is the hotels in all kinds of contexts and places and has had to adapt your design to, to all sorts of things. Yes. <laughs> uh, mine's David Coz. I've been eating my dress and everything too. Yes, please. Uh, 2700 Camden Road, Columbus, Ohio, 43221. And I'm not sure that's that's a different question than well, number of windows per, per bedroom. Right, right. Well, it, yeah, it helps me understand, I guess, where the compromise has to happen. Yeah, yeah I, and I can speak to, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong on this side. I mean, we've done <coughs> systems where we're single pipe, two pipe systems. Um, the expense ratio, astronomical, as you start getting, there's VRVs, I think VR, they're variable refrigerant lines that are becoming more popular that people are, are trying to use. But again, the cost to operate those, the front end cost to put them in, would probably be in the tune of three million dollars, two and a half million dollars more on a probably a fifteen million dollar project. I mean, it wouldn't work on this kind of brand. The scale you're talking. So this is 118 rooms. We're 116 rooms. 116. Um, and that was important too, as the height was real important. You know, I think anything less than where we are today, which is really small for most of our hotels. Most of our hotels are in the 150 to 200 range. Um, we understand Delaware probably, is, the market doesn't justify something that big, but the operating model, the, the employment staff, all the things that we put into one of these hotels, anything under 100 really is very difficult for us to operate. Um, we like to get closer to 115. 116 it helps our operating model. Um, so. Back to what Warren was mentioning before, the, the standards and most every brand's doing this, more light, more natural light in rooms. Customers are complaining about windows not allowing enough natural light in. So all the brand standards and all the Marriott Hiltons are getting larger and it becomes difficult in a situation like this. And we had a similar case um, when we did our Hampton Inn downtown in the Shore North. And uh, we did exactly that and pushed those and realized what uh, catastrophe it did inside the room because our furniture didn't fit, didn't work, we couldn't get into the PTAC to service it and clean it, you know, it just, it messed. So you'd actually have to probably make the entire building, the rooms, two feet longer, um, which again, I don't know what the cost would be, but it astronomically jumps the, the cost to build something like this. So 
We have never used any of those other systems um, other than any project we're currently doing in downtown Columbus in a canopy brand, which is a brand standard in that brand that you need to put in one of those four pipe systems. Um, and again, the rate and the quality of that brand within the Hilton chain is like at the top of their level. So you know, we're able to afford it uh, at that location. Um, here's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different for us. David, talk, talk about the louver integrated with the window. Yeah, so what we do in, in all of our hotels is we integrate the louver into the window itself. You don't so, have, have any detailed pictures of, the, of that other than the rendering? Um, that would be useful. I can send them. Okay, um, that'd be great. Kind of an architecture deal. So what happens, we, we, we tint the window sometimes a little bit too and get the grill and the window to really match each other. So it almost looks what we call it. Well, like the grill is actually integrated into the window frame. It comes into one single piece. Yeah. So it really, as best as it can, it looks like it's part of the window. So so the dark black that in the, the bottom is, is, the is really what we're looking at. Yeah. And just since, so I don't forget, is, is obviously there's noise, right? How about condensation? Does the condensation drip externally or does it internal drain? So. Okay, so so it wouldn't be anything that drips out. Okay. So I have um like I said, since this is informal, I'm just throwing out ideas. Uh, one of the things that uh, I can foresee many of the people in our town and probably on this commission objecting to is just the 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 height. Uh, and I understand you have the 118 rooms you need for the business model. And so on, but it is something that is a very prominent kind of monolithic looking building that would be right there on the edge of our downtown, essentially. And I'm wondering, um, kind of picking up on on uh, Commissioner Herring's ideas and some of the prior things we've done here in the downtown, if there are ways to make it more visually interesting in that regard. So, for example, I was thinking on the, the if you think of it in terms of three bays, right, the leftmost portion there to the left of the, the fish scaling. What if you were to try to play up the, the idea that this sort of a streetscape look and make that red brick and have lighter brick on the right and some other color in the middle? That'd be one thing I'd think of just to give it some variation uh, in the colors to make it look more like the downtown where you see lots of different shades of brick. Uh, the other thing, if you were to look at our, our county courthouse, uh, the latest one that we built I forget when it was now, 2013, 14 perhaps. Uh, I know one of the things they did there on the upper levels, they went to a lighter colored material to de-emphasize the height. Um, and that's just something just to throw out there as an idea as well, uh, might be possible. And then I think I would I would just sort of, personally speaking anyway, echo what the city staff said regarding the, the, the extent of the fish scale uh, appearance there, which if I remember correctly from my architectural history, what, 1910s, I think, something like that, Princess Anne kind of looked, the fish scaling, and there's a lot of it. <laughs> and so I think that would be something to think about, is, is it too much? Is it going to look kind of overwhelming a bit uh, with the light brick, the, the light turquoise? Um, and that might be something just to think about. Uh, it, it's, it's better than not having any, I'd say, but uh, it, yeah, it might be a little much. Anyway, that's my three ideas I throw out there for now. So you going back, I'm tired, so you're looking at like different colored, so the buildings look different buildings, is that what you meant? Yeah, different bricks yeah I was there. thinking that might be one possible idea to break up that sort of uh, kind of monolithic look to it. Yeah, you could have, sir, on the, on the left portion there, maybe you do red brick and then do the lighter brick in the right and some other color in the middle there so that it almost looks like three buildings. And you see some, some, uh, similar types of things if you look in some of our downtowns that really are they're actually an entire block but they're done in such a way that they look like almost two separate buildings. I'm thinking around um, on the what is it the northeast corner of William and Sandusky for example you see some of that. Is that bottom left slide. Mm -hmm. Not really, it'll top right. Yeah, it's, we'll give it sort of a postmodern feel I suppose but uh, but it would look interesting though, maybe, perhaps. Does the commission have any thoughts on the <clears throat> material on, on the exterior cladding on the first floor? Is that smooth yeah, face I, limestone? Yeah, is that what yeah. you're It's like proposing? a sandblasted, that, it looks like. Which, I the, think it's this that This is one. the bottom, right? Right. right. Correct. Right. Uh, I, I'll just weigh in in general, just some thoughts. Um, uh, 
I travel a lot on business and so I'm a Marriott guy, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, uh, to me, I think one of the biggest problems I have is the coloring to me, while I understand we have some, some lighter buildings downtown, is, is the size and, and mass of this thing. And then the color makes it look very suburban to me. This, if I were to take out everything, this kind of looks like a courtyard that I would stay at by the airport, you know, kind of a suburban feel to it. Um, so I get that you might not want to do the same red brick that the Ohio Wesleyan buildings have. Um, that, that's just me, you know, color, everybody's got an opinion, right? Um, I do like the idea of having it at the sidewalk because I think it, that's just been something that we've been pretty strict on. Now we did have one that we allowed for a patio, but essentially we want to create that, um, you know, smooth uh, storefront. Now I realize there's not a lot there, but you want the activity to be at the edge of the sidewalk, right? So you're walking down, and I get that we're not downtown. I get you're not going to have a doorman, you know, or a bell cap or anybody. But that's kind of what I'd like to have that feel like at least. Um, so I, I like the idea of moving it back to the sidewalk. I'm not thrilled with the color. I get that you've got restrictions on the on the window size. the The first floor feels very generic to me. I'm not sure. You know, if I, if I kind of put my hand up, that, that could be any building almost anywhere. And I know you have, I assume that's like meeting spaces and that kind of stuff. So I get that you probably have your, your light requirements, but that feels very just sort of plain and, and blah to me. I think uh, Stephanie might have mentioned awnings, um, something to kind of break that, anything I think to kind of break that monolith on the, on the lower part would would I would feel better with but uh, particularly when I look at your renderings where it's actually kind of put in there thank you for that by the way it was really helpful but mm -hmm. it does make it I don't know it really makes it seem out of place it just kind of feels like it's been put in there almost like you've done you know here it looks like it's CGI it doesn't I don't know it just doesn't feel like it belongs there to me and I, I know that's not super constructive feedback <laughs> I wish I could, again, I'm not a design professional. I know what I like, but I'm not sure I can tell you how to get there. So you're saying not from the <laughs> scale and size, but just the way the art, the colors, it, the look, way it, it looks. And, yeah. I would love if you could take one of those three buildings and make a small boutique hotel. I get that you can't do that, right? So I understand the business side of this. And if, and that's really probably way more in planning and, and other people's purview than ours. Um, I, I like the fact that you, that it just isn't a solid front. I like the kind of three building feel. I like the difference in materials. I'm, I, I just don't know that I like the white and, and silvery green. It, it feels very suburban to me. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we have a couple other ones that we had them just kind of throw right. some yeah. of these things yeah. and they yeah. may touch on and give a little bit more. Yeah, just the way you guys are saying, yeah. too, you know, that may, may all of a sudden say, boy, that starts to feel a lot yeah. better. Yeah. To, to tack on to what uh, Commissioner Hatton just said, uh, yeah, I think to me, too, the thing that, you know, first of all, with the contextual imaging that you put up there, that was very helpful. And frankly, it was not nearly as hulking and <laughs> yeah. uh, menacing as I thought it would look, you know, in my mind's eye, you know, as far as the mass goes. But I think. <laughs> Having the lighter colors, yeah, I see. I think that's much better because mm -hmm. I think um, the lighter colors is going to make it look bigger and more, you know, imposing. And I know you want it to be visible. You want people to see it and know it's there. But I, I think you don't want that to be like the the focal point of downtown either. Well, you might because it's <laughs> you know, probably good for business. But but I think you know. You, I think there needs to be a balance struck between the enormous massing of this relative to every other building. I think probably the largest buildings downtown are probably the uh, uh, Edgar Hall and uh, former Delaware County Bank, Commonwealth Bank. Those are both four-story buildings, and I think city courthouse. and the courthouse. Yeah. And that's kind of a unique animal, though. Right. But, um, but in terms of buildings of this 
well, I guess it's Italian made, so it's kind of like style. But but I think you know those are the ones that jump to mind, and those are you know much smaller buildings. But I think you know again toning down um, the value of the color will you know not make it disappear. People will still see this, and you'll still get plenty of people noticing it and you know going there. But I think it will strike a nice compromise between you know the size of this building and you know not just being glaring and in your face and the only thing you really notice when you're driving down Sandusky Street or Spring Street. And again, I think um, that's my biggest concern, that and the setback. Oh, oh, no. uh, oh that's the Homewood Suites. Uh, so that's... I just... Stole that from my pack. Yeah, I stole that I mean, from Joe's packet. I read these off the internet, but just, you know, a couple of different things. And that, by the way, you can another, you know, that's part of the chain. So um, that's in Pikeville, Kentucky. Um, same chain. So, I mean, I think it can be done, you know. Um, I like on the Homewood, I like the larger, um, drawing a blank for the uh, cornice, thank you. Um, I think that helps make it look a little less modern. The color's better there, but it still, it looks very, it still looks very suburban and modern yeah. to me. I just don't get a, uh, Downtown historic district feel yeah. to it, and then and then I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Could I ask you? Have you worked with Ohio Wesleyan closely? Uh, yes, yes, the company yeah, has, yeah. and and they're okay with you dropping this building and sort of dwarfing their art museum. I mean, they're they're fine. Yeah, we have not had any discussions of a problem. Now we're having mm -hmm. continued ones. I think later this month, I think we're having another meeting with to go over more of of the uh, architecture and stuff. So it hasn't right. gotten real far. You okay, know, I was just wondering because it, it's a very large building. And, well, and uh, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but with a variance, the whatever the square footage is, those people are notified and can come in. No, oh, yeah, I mean, we're, comments, so. we're not even to the point of doing a code review in terms of variances yet right. uh, because we're, we're going to be talking about a zone change of some kind and then we can Figure out where the design lands, where the building lands, and, and right. what we may or may not. But, but there'll be lots of opportunity for public input. Oh yeah, but certainly we've encouraged them, and just like you just did. I mean, the, the immediate neighbor here is Ohio Westland, who's made a significant investment in the community, and that, that's clearly one of the reasons why they're looking at this site is because Ohio Westland is right there. So uh, they need to continue those conversations, as far as we're concerned, with the university. And, and if the building or was moved to the curb, I know then you lose your little, your drive. Um, is it possible, because in the rendering, it looks like you've kind of put some outcroppings well, to create a safe space, for lack of a better word, to drop off. That, can, that gets a little more complicated on <laughs> the city side in terms yeah. of uh, licensures, variances, having private items, uh, even steel beams holding up a you know, some sort of canopy or, or right. awning or something in our right-of-way. Okay. Um, so those are things that even having a drop-off, a private drop-off area in our public street right-of-way that would be private drop-off for just one private business is, is something we don't have. We get a couple of loading zones. <laughs> well, we have loading zones. Uh, uh, yes, we do. I think this is a little different approach at it, but it's helpful to know your feedback because there's, I mean, there's ways to do anything. Right. And it's just a matter of process. Precedent as well from, from that perspective. We've had lots of conversations about things on our sidewalks and precedent mm -hmm. um, with this group, so you're, you're very familiar with that kind right. of discussion. And there's also some safety discussion with respect to how do you do that and still maintain a public street. And, and that sort of thing. So those are all elements we're going to have to work through. But it's exactly but, why we needed your feedback. Right. We need your feedback. So it looks. Is staff? I know staff didn't really make a recommendation. I know from this commission, we probably we take a straw poll. Probably would like to see that moved out to the curb. Yeah. Well, one of the things we're looking at is that area of Spring Street anyway, which is. Uh, didn't have streetscape extended to it, uh, like the downtown, and looks that could use a little upgrading, shall we say. 
And maybe this would be, as the project moves forward, an opportunity to think about things like that. It doesn't really have a, a tree lawn, per se, in this part of the block until right. you get farther to the west. And maybe there are ways to still let the street be, be the street, carry the traffic. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a major street like Sadusky, but uh, maybe reestablish a tree row in here, a more formal tree row, maybe establish things like uh, best management practices for stormwater runoff and things like that. Could be little rain gardens or something. Green it up, soften it up, uh, and yet it, try to extend streetscape uh, through it and to it, at least up to Franklin Street as well. So those are things that were concepts we're just kind of playing around with because they've Frankly, the common approach to us about doing a major investment in a hotel at that location. Right. Okay. Uh, it would be an appropriate time. It'd be it'd be wonderful to bury all the overhead wires as well, which are on the other side of the street, but that has a, an astronomical cost associated with it. Um, so, who knows whether that could be done or whether it could even be moved to the the rear of those buildings, kind of like here, placed on, you know, metal poles or something. So those are all things we're talking about. So it's. It's possible and having the feedback of the group, we heard directly from two of you, maybe three of you in that regard. So be interested in what the other commissioners are feeling. I think the initial reaction was try to get that drop off zone off the street for all those reasons. But there could be yeah. a compelling and making a compelling case for the other side as well. You know, I'm wondering too though, if if, if you were to pull that forward up to the street. Uh, would that free up more of a large block for parking behind the the hotel? Because that's one of the things that are currently in the standards. If I read them correctly, you're not really allowed to have side parking off streets on the side of the buildings in this uh, transitional sub-district. And it'd be nice if you could kind of hide that away if you had a bigger space. Just because of the size of the building footprint on the, this it's a big building, it's six stories, no doubt. The, the, it's three lots wide though, so that's not that wide. Mm -hmm. And so to try to put this building on it, you just can't get behind to get well, to, to park here. You could yeah. if you uh, change the building around a little or, bit. Or, or, you know, not now, obviously this is just spitballing here, but yeah. uh, approach Wesley and, you know, and if you could get shared access through their parking space, they might lose a couple of their current spaces, but you give them, you know, if they lose two, you give them three or four behind the building and you and still take up a net of 15, 16 spaces or something like that. Yeah. And they have to be on the museum side because the other two sides are just. Yeah, on the museum table. side, right, looking right. at the aerial um, uh, Google or uh, map or whatever, you can see it's a parking lot. So it'd yeah. be just, you know, drive through access through a current parking lot. And again, you would have to. Probably or I think there was a little difference in there too. So, Aaron, what side parking are you talking about? Um, they don't. It's actually parking across the street and on the street. Was it across the street? Okay. Yeah, because that's the back. Just remembering of that. Ross. So that. Uh, okay, you're right. So, because I'm when I'm looking at this. So, if you move the building forward, do you even have access to the back? No, you wouldn't. You'd have to no. move Ohio Wesleyan's front building there. Okay. And there is so there, there is a huge, that retaining wall is holding up a lot, and then right behind. <laughs> yeah. You don't see in this picture. There's huge Not rock formations mm -hmm. yeah, coming down into that, that yeah, site, right. so and it's steep. Um, it would be very difficult. But okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see that. I was I was confused. You're right. The parking is across the street, yeah. though. Okay, I turned it into so. a handball court. <laughs> So I am wondering, is the logistical question, because I know you have, I remember correctly, you said 118 rooms is the plan? It was really small, I couldn't quite tell, so 118, okay. But then I noticed this, what I saw then on the renderings, it said 33 off-street parking spots and 17 on-street, uh, which is only 50. So uh, what do you do with the other 50 guests? <laughs> uh, where would they park? We'll work on parking elsewhere, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking to the university. Okay. Um, and we're looking in you know, the vicinity of the area we're working with the city on possibly making those parallel spots that you're seeing now more head-in spots there's enough room to do that which would probably uh, yeah. double the amount of spots Least, that are yeah. showing there now so is there like a common ratio of rooms to uh cars because some guests are going to double up you know or when i travel on business you know we take one car from the airport and there's three or four of us so it's I mean, changing so fast yeah, I Uber it's, it's, yeah. it's uh, yeah. the Uber world and the in and, and it's 
it's hard to determine that in different markets are, are different. We don't expect to need as many parking spaces here as you would say like our Hilliard location. Um, you know, um, but in our downtown Columbus, we probably park, I think it's about 54% of our occupied rooms have a car throughout the year. Um, do you guys, with the, the look that, that you presented with, with the colors and everything, is, is that more of a design choice or is, is there a corporate branding kind of feel? No, that was more of a design choice. Okay. And we do have, so this is the orange, so we looked at orange versus like a dark gray center and then there's, um, there's another scheme where it was kind of rose. It's not like a, a dark red like university, but it's more like a, a lighter red. David, you could slide through those, they're down. Um, it was a color that I saw a lot in the downtown area, so this is orange again. And this is the rose, and I, I kind of like the rose one, personally. But. And any thought to a little more mass on the cornice up above? Uh, that would not be a problem at all. I, I feel like if, if you wanted to bring it down, you know, a couple of floors to just try and make it you know, reduce the height, make it look like it's reducing the height a little yeah. bit. I think that's a pretty common move to do. So I'd like the picture that we had there, and if you point in the right direction here, if you go up and look at the, the two county buildings, which are new, um, they have that sort of design element, I think, which helped. You know, we, we went around and they had a lot of parameters too, particularly with the newest version, because there's a courthouse in there ingress and egress for prisoners and, and all the security things that happen with those so there was a lot of design elements around that that were challenging as well but i think we ended up with maybe once again not what everybody wants at any point in time but that never happens right so um i don't know does anybody else have thoughts questions um, well, particularly that, maybe around the color yeah the i would just say on that not so much on the brick but the white windows against the brick that really heightens the you know the ac unit so i kind of you know with that brick and a darker you know uh window i think it, to me it would look a lot better and you wouldn't see the uh the hvac systems or you probably wouldn't notice them on the the dark window frame although the county does and I'm trying to think of the county building. I think it's buff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, normally, as you know, in, in historic buildings, the the eyes are painted dark, right? So the windows or frames are dark. Um, and I, I agree, the white ones really stand out. So I, if that could be darkened up, I think that would make it less prominent. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I want to circle back around to, and I feel like we're beating up the architects, so sorry. It's more just a matter of in the context of, of in our downtown. I think it's a, a nice building um, in general. Just, I don't know, some of the things I think, yeah, like we're talking about, maybe don't fit so well with our downtown, in my view. And one of them, I'm wondering back on the, the center section there with the, um, the kind of the fish scale uh, design there. Um, just throwing out another thing in our downtown, in addition to brick, we have a lot of buildings that have been renovated lately that have wood siding. Um, and I'm wondering maybe in lieu of the fish scale, uh, that might be another thing to think about. Maybe there's a way to play some of that into it or some combination of them uh, just to kind of break up the, the large uh, flat quality there and still tie it into what's in our downtown. That might be another thing just to put out there. The orange one has black windows. It is black. No. And, and I agree. Some bigger cornices or something to kind of kind of break up the the box. That would be good. So they're they're black and white. Well, the, the, the letters is a mm. precast. Color. Right. That's a that's how about but the the centerpiece is that the also center, precast or is that correct? It's it's a pilaster. Okay. In the middle. Um, mm. It could be. It's not that you couldn't paint it a dark color. But right. there again, then it kind of goes back to instead of having the windows in proportion Which as stand. called out in the standards, right. then that from a visual standpoint, you're back in which right. yeah. Right. So, but that's supposed to look. But that would be that would be the same. But that would be the same material uh, as the the lentils and the sills, correct? Um, no? I think it will have the same look. I'm not sure if it'll be. I I, I think the header will be precast. I think the the pilaster will probably be more like a 
PVC or something. I'm not sure exactly what that material is. I don't think it'll be precast though. Like an ephus or something? <laughs> um, it could be. It's probably a material that's painted. But it would be the same color. It would be similar. Yeah, like so it's kind of like I'm stone. looking for the same look. It's just um, I don't think they made them like that. Right. right. Oh, I, I mean, that, that actually answers my question. I mean, essentially, they're going to look essentially mm -hmm. the same. Yes. It's different material, similar color. look so, and texture. Correct. Are there any uh, comments relative to the cornice line, which is pretty clean here? There is one, but it's it's. Well, yeah, that's what we have five minutes talking about it. making it larger. Any bracketing or any other detailing? I mean, some of the comments, a lot of the themes of it, it's it's reading pretty monolithic and pretty flat, less the three bays. That that's yeah. not uncommon in downtown, but then that maybe gets toward some of that yeah. Disneyfied look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if again, if you look at the two new county buildings, <coughs> um, they have a fairly sizable cornice. Um, to really kind of pay homage, I guess, to the Italianate architecture downtown, but without creating a lot of brackets and things that I think aren't going to look appropriate. So to me, it's really more just having more weight up there. This kind of feels like a hat without a brim sort mm -hmm. of thing. And it just it, it seems to me, um, you know, old houses, old buildings generally have big soffits and in downtown, a, a, a more weighty, uh, you know, cornice, I think, would, would kind of make that look uh, better. Mm -hmm. Do the standards have a proportion for the cornice? Yeah, it was one to 15. 15. Our standards don't, I think. You think? I think they do. Get your book out. <laughs> I'll admit I haven't read that level of detail, perhaps. Cornices. We, we don't think right now we have, have many major new structures. In well, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, these are the new. Yeah, these are the new ones. I think this is exciting for our city, and I think it's a good thing. I mean, we. I. I don't talk amongst everybody, but I feel like. Um, we appreciate your investment and I think with the awnings again like I see the design I really like the white because um, it kind of mimics the painted brick that we have downtown I feel like maybe going a little darker with maybe this um, the metal with the white would be pretty I know this is totally like not what you guys are talking about but adding the awnings to like the first floor, I think would make it feel like a boutique um, mm -hmm. and kind of make it feel more classy. But um, that, and I, I like the, obviously not with the standards of bringing the front to the sidewalk. I kind of like the drive in just for the, you know, drop off and everything. I think that obviously it sounds like it will save the city a lot more hassle and liabilities, so there. I agree with the setback too. I do like that better. I, I don't think it's real workable or feasible to have it right up on the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm. One thing in favor of a setback is it what does sort of soften that sense that it is mm -hmm. a giant building. Um, and I generally tend to favor things being more close up to the street, but I could see the argument there. But it does it's sort of nice diminish that thing. a little. We have put in some trees or whatever. Yeah. I was going to read for just for everyone's knowledge here. It's on page seven of our standards for uh, new builds in the, the transitional subdistrict. It says street facing roof line shall be horizontal. Uh, the cornice at the top of the building face shall be plain and not heavily articulated as in the downtown core buildings. The cornice height shall be approximately one fifteenth of the total building height unless it is or is to be a downtown core type of building. Um, goes on, but that's sort of the general gist of it. And again, that's assuming, assuming that's in the transitional district. Yeah, right? and assuming it's course. designed to be a transition, so, right? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can go either way, I suppose. Other comments, thoughts, um, questions? 
Can I ask you guys to comment a little Please. bit? Because we really like the drop off too for a lot of reasons, you know, from the city and from our guest experiences and people coming, safety and all those things. The pork to share, you know, kind of no one's commented on it really at all. And I think if we are going to be at a position where I think we are going to have a drop off or a need uh, something there, um, and I don't know if you want to talk about you know, what, what we have, what that is, kind of uh, materials. And sure. Um, basically, if I don't have a slide here, but the um, one that I had sent you that was part of your presentation, where it's about the materials, um, it kind of had a little shot of um, the pork for sheriff's glass. Basically, it's a, just a simple glass cover. Um, it has a, a, a steel glycol at the front and it has steel beams that run back to the building, the glass kind of there. So right there in the middle was kind of the inspiration for it. But it's just really clean and simple. Uh, it's not meant to have a lot of um, weight or visual character. It's just supposed to float and cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it makes I, me I, think we can make the sky bridge kind of look. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll be, I'll be honest. That actually, and again, I don't mean this to sound at all insulting, although it probably does. <laughs> but when I when I see the design, I keep thinking nineteen sixties because of the colors. I think partly in just the, the that kind of industrial look of it, and I think the Porcocher reminds me of that more because it is sort of more modern, futuristic looking. Yeah. And I look. I, I just pulled up here like this picture of the Allen Hotel, which I know is is just one of many inspirations. But it has something similar, but it is a little more historic looking, as it obviously is historical. But um, I don't know. I, was, I think if if there was a way to maybe think about it, is there a way to kind of minimize that modern look with the steel and the Y shape and so on? I I'd be interested to see what other options are out there. So I'm not. Saying, oh, I don't like it at all, but I think it it plays up that that modern feel that I'm uneasy with. But yeah, I would just echo what Aaron said. I did that echo exactly the same way. Although I go one further and say I don't like that uh, pork crochet. I I just think it looks too incongruous with you know the downtown. I believe I, there's. I mean, it's a 19th century downtown. I realize this is a new build and it's not going to be a 19th century building, but I think that is more Jetsons than, you know, 19th century. And I just think it needs to, you know, not necessarily mimic what was on the Allen Hotel, but something that would harken more back to that, as Aaron had suggested. Yeah, I'm, I'm not enamored with it. It's it's kind of hard to see in the drawings right so you know because we're just looking at sort of the, the flat part but yeah i don't it, it again it, it just doesn't it doesn't feel like it fits in very well with our downtown and again the standards don't call we're not trying to recreate the allen hotel but but we you know it, it should fit um i don't want to say seamlessly but it should it should be uh, geez it should have been a long night right <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, you know I'm almost thinking of like cooking where it's just the ingredients aren't the same but they blend together well right and, yeah and, and it just doesn't feel like it does that and, and I wish I could knew enough to express what I would suggest is we as you sat through some of our earlier meetings a lot of times it's like I know what I like but, right, sometimes I have to see it. And maybe a brewery on the first floor. No, <laughs> I said a brewery on the first floor because we now found out there was one of these. Yeah, there you go. So it is. It's all the beach in Delaware, right? So. Thought, anything else? Ah, we kept these guys late. If you guys have questions. Is there anything we haven't? Or touched on that, that you'd like us to you know that you want to call out anything else that we can do to help or or the storefront in front that you interpreted that it had to be storefront talk to the because on that space so oh, um so i think in the standards it says that the first floor has to be i think 
maybe it was 80% glazed. Um, there are a lot of surface spaces in the hotel on that first mm -hmm. floor. So we are showing a lot of storefront there. I don't think that we're quite at 80%. But the other thing I think that you should note is that a lot of that glass is going to be um, spandrel. It, it'll either be frosted in such a way that it'll let light through it or it'll be a solid glass. Um, just simply because you don't want to see <laughs> right. some of these spaces. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to comment on that. No, I, I assumed, just spending a lot of time in hotels, yeah. that that was all meeting space and stuff. So, yeah. I, again, we can, for the right project, for any project, we can we can make variances. And, and those, those standards are really designed around storefronts. Right? Not so much hotels. I'm looking at like the Allen Hotel. On the front, they have, certainly on this on this front corner, they have what we would consider to be a traditional storefront. Then they've got the entrance back under the portico or whatever you'd want to call that. But if you look on the, would that that'd be the Winter Street side, right? So on the Winter Street side, they sort of have, they're not double hung, but they're sort of that same proportion as large double hungs. Um, yeah, I'm, like I said, the, the first floor, I, I don't like, and so I would be, if you guys don't need all of that and, and can come up with a better design plan, I'm, I would be open to that. I think that's... That may give you some of the variety we're looking for and yeah. the facade. Yeah, especially because, you know, the standards don't allow for frosting and tinting and those sort of things, so, you know, kind of got the... We would eliminate that problem if you just if you don't need the glass. Yeah. I don't know that that we would necessarily require that. I think that would be something that we could yeah I, easily weigh. Uh, yeah, if the design fit well, that makes sense. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> Ready to call it an evening. All right, so no, no formal action, obviously. This was, this was just an informal review. Thank you very much. Thanks for staying Thank late. You. Thank you. Um, thank you for the package. It, it, this is, you know, obviously there's gonna be a lot of steps in this. This is, this is a really big, really exciting uh, project for downtown. So um, we appreciate your coming in and giving us the preview. And hopefully we'll see you in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, just to echo Commissioner Gundy's comments, I, I, you know, I do think, you know, um, this is exciting for downtown because I do think it'll bring more people downtown and I think everybody, you know, appreciates a vibrant downtown that has activity and obviously bringing, you know, 100 more people downtown. Um, I think that means more restaurants for us to go to uh, more excitement downtown so i do think um it's uh it's an exciting project and look forward to seeing what you guys come up to right. thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening don't forget these oh yeah your samples okay number five on the agenda moving right along uh staff comments i have nothing staff are you sure, <laughs> are you sure? You <laughs> Uh, number six. Yeah, com I hope you ate before you came. Commission oh. member comments and discussion. Yes, I'm not trying to be brief and concise, but I do think, um, you know, we did talk about the uh, fiberglass windows uh, study in that. So um, I would ask staff if they could be again research on that and, you know, see what you can put together, especially again on just how these hold up over time, longevity. Um, and let, let's see what other uh, cities have worked those into their standards. We know the National Trust has not. We know the state of Ohio has not. But it would be interesting to see if anybody else has. If I can go one step further, um, as I think, um, Stephanie, you brought up the point that we have so often we, we talk and like, hey, let's get some information, and then nothing ever really happens uh, after we gather a little bit of information. This is one where I think that once we collect that information, if it's at a point where, hey, you know, we really should move forward and maybe incorporate this into our standards, 
uh, if you could all help us figure out the plan for how to make that happen uh, so that we don't just end up having it disappear into a black hole. Because I think this is one where it potentially has the potential to really change how we do things with our, our windows. Uh, if, if the longevity is there, I think visually they look pretty much identical even when you're this close to them. So, okay. okay. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right. Next regular meeting, if necessary, will be August 22nd. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We are adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. That is what it was. I think it's our new record. <laughs> you know what? Uh, no, we might have been here long.